Hello, hello, and welcome to Simi Sunday at Attic Door Media. I am going to put up my face before I introduce myself this time. Oh, looking for a game to capture. <laughs> We are starting off good. All right, there we go. It found it. It found it. I'm Cece, and I'm here with Mary, and today we are going to be building a build shaped like the Wonder Woman logo, which I am presently wearing. That you are. That you are. Indeed. So, um, I'm thinking about to start where we should place the build, and um, we don't have anywhere that looks like Greece. So, I'm wondering, does this area look kind of like DC or is there maybe like I was gonna say solar silly city <laughs> Del Sol Valley maybe uh, I know Del Sol Valley is supposed to be LA yeah LA is is one of your are, is one of your sleeves a short sleeve and the other one a long sleeve or is it just the way that that your shirt is sitting they're the same length okay it's just okay it's just the way it's that just it, lopsided okay. on on camera okay, okay. fun okay I was confused. It's okay. I don't have any brain rocks today. Oh. Um, yes, because you were busy today. Oh God. I have been building uh, in Minecraft since 10.30 a.m. yesterday. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I mean, I, I slept. Um, okay. <laughs> That's good. I am incapable of, of not sleeping. Um, uh, but one of my favorite streamers, YouTubers, uh, Kelsey Dangerous, is doing a uh, fundraiser for children's hospitals with Extra Life. And we are part of a build competition, building a fairy healing garden. And uh, the whole community was uh, building yesterday. It was, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, do Windenburg. Windenburg? Yeah. Okay. We'll see if it fits on the lot. Okay. Why don't you, um, why don't you trash Aaron, though? Or do you want to not trash Aaron, though? I don't want a lot that size if I can manage it. Okay. That's Is fair. it That's seriously fair. that dark in the morning? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, okay. when it gets dark, because there's no, um, there's no ambient light in, in parts of Windenburg. <laughs> That's not what you want to see on a real estate listing. No ambient yeah. light. Uh, <laughs> it's a dark hole. <laughs> Windenburg and um, Bridleton Bay get really, really dark. Not as dark as um, Vampire Town. I mean, I wouldn't call uh, Forgotten Hollow, sorry. I was trying to come up with the name of the neighborhood. My brain was like, Godric's Hollow. It's like, no brain, that's not it. Godric's Hollow, no brain. <laughs> that's, that's one, not the right property, but also that has nothing to do with vampires. Um, in Forgotten Hollow, I wouldn't ever call Forgotten Hollow being very bright at all. Like, it's not very just well lit in general. Um... This is going to be an interesting build. Uh, they usually are. They usually are. <laughs> oh, you're just going to straight up... Um... I'm going to hope that I can duplicate it. Sorry about that. That's okay. So I'm pretty hyped for this actually because I recently watched Wonder Woman Bloodlines. Bloodlines. Yes. And also Wonder Woman was a big part of the Snyder Cut. Yes. Okay. We're going to need it. We're going to need a longer w, w on this. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get it though. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe we can try to make this chonkier. Um, so that there's like actual room inside the building of the build. 
uh, you know, something we strive for here at Addictor Media. <laughs> yeah, what are you, um, what are you gonna make this? So I was thinking of making this, uh, specifically like a art and antiquities museum. Because Wonder Woman, yeah. Is an archaeologist, sort of. Yes. She is, right? She's an archaeologist. Yeah, she is. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. And in some of the stories I've read with her, she often goes on, like, fun archaeology-style adventures in addition to the regular superheroing. Fun? Yeah. It is fun, actually. You get, you know, a little Wonder Woman, a little Indiana Jones. Oh, uh, you know me, I love archaeology. So yes. that's always exciting. Yeah. She's always finding, you know, like some ancient ruins uh, with some artifact about some deity. Oh, well, let's not do that. Yeah. Well, you know what? We'll remove the floor and then, you know, maybe we'll put it back later. If, if we feel like it. If I decide that, you know, we, if we deserve a floor, we'll put it back in. Well, I can see this is not gonna work. love doing builds with all the really awkward angles. I can't do any of the round ones, so what am I supposed to do? Okay, can we flip this? Well, after a fashion, I suppose. Let's just, let's try duplicating it. And then I guess turning it? Yeah, that works. That works. That works. I probably should have started by figuring out where the center of the slot was and then going from there. And then I could have started at like the beginning why? of the W. <laughs> yeah, but like, why? Why is a term that starts with W? <laughs> um, okay, how, this is a 40 by 30 lot, I think? Yes, I think okay. so. One, it looks two, like they're not three. going to bomb the server that we were on bomb um so i we were under the impression that yeah, the minecraft server 30. was going to get um deleted after the competition which it appears it might not be which is fantastic because they built a bounce house oh wow a functional bounce house oh my goodness it was awesome uh so for like a solid five minutes yesterday there was just like 15 strangers from all over the internet jumping around in a virtual bounce house. And I have to tell you, it was legitimately some of the most fun I've ever had on the internet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Wait. <laughs> Crap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Do you um Counting is the most difficult part of my builds. It is. It <laughs> Thank is. you. <laughs> I realized that I wasn't getting a response and I'm like Yeah, sorry. Uh bounce house. It's fine. Very cool. It's, it was it was fun. <laughs> fun it was random and unexpected um yeah bouncing with strangers in the internet i wonder if i could like i think it would be helpful to make the top of the w maybe a little taller than mm -hmm. the wings even though that's not strictly accurate to the logo just to create like a bigger space inside. Let me. Okay. Let's try this. Very curious to see how you're gonna do this. <laughs> uh, so am I. <laughs> 
Okay, so this is just not gonna work. Um, so let's try making this the same size as this. And then, oh, this is not really the actual size though, because we did this. Um, and then we, Wow, and how did you uh, enjoy Luna last night? It looked like you were having a really good time. It was really fun. I liked it a lot. I tried to like half pay attention. I was there for a large chunk of it. Yes, you helped me with several puzzles. I'm very good at like two things. <laughs> One of those things is pushing random buttons until something works. I was defeated at the end by my nemesis clocks, but thankfully chat helped me out. <laughs> What happened to, um, to our friendo? Uh, you're our not gonna wanna know the answer to that. Oh, no. <laughs> it's an indie game, so we were tears. Sadness. But Bean is okay, right? Uh. Is Bean the bad guy? Bean is actually the mentor. You know what? I thought that might be it, but I also was like super brain dead, and I was like, there's no way that they're gonna do that. No, they did though. So we had to say goodbye to our mentor and our bean? Yes, it was very sad. No, that's the worst. Yeah, it was good though. I like when indie games hurt me. <laughs> you are a strange woman. It's true though. It, yes, it is true, but it is also sad. Yeah. Little bean. I liked our little bean friend. They were a good bean. I know it had like an actual name, but um. Uh, Lay. It, its name was Lay. I do not know its gender. Well, the the, the I thought it was Lay, but the H made me think it was Leia, and that just seemed confusing. So yeah. Uh, I decided it was Bean. And Alethea, was... Alethea looked it up, and uh, uh, it's pronounced Lay. Oh. So the H is silent or not pronounced by me. <laughs> what, you like putting random um, silent H's in names too, so. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um... <laughs> I, you know, I keep making these choices to do designs that are diagonal. And I, you know, I thought Knowing it's that the game hates, hates it, hates it. <laughs> uh, and I thought this time it'll be okay because it's the same diagonal. <laughs> but uh, spoiler alert, it wasn't. <laughs> okay, let's try. Wow. Hold on, it should be the same. It should be the same. <laughs> Why isn't it the same? Oh, it is. It is. It is. It is. Because you keep asking the game to do things it does not want to do. I got a bit combobulated by the little wingy section. This is going to be a very small build. Yeah, so I was... It's Yeah, it's a museum, so I guess it'll be a small museum. <laughs> Uh, is he gonna, does it recognize this as a single room? Because I'd like to add a floor. Oh no. Please don't make me do it again. <laughs> hey, Alethea! I was mentioning that yesterday you looked up the names and the pronunciations of the characters in Luna for me so that I could pronounce them, which I appreciated. We are currently, um, attempting Wonder Woman. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's going. It's certainly going. Uh, I'm, the plan to build this as an art museum, I think, was a good choice because, uh, I don't know how we would even get a house in here. It's so thin. Uh, but right now, my primary concern is getting a floor in here because what I have is a bunch of, uh, disconnected walls. So let me try doing this. And seeing... If this... Which part it thinks doesn't think is a room? 
Well, if I go over all of the walls with this tool, it will then think all of the walls are part of a room and then hopefully put a floor on this thing. I found out Wonder Woman 84 is coming back to HBO Max. In mid May, I'll be able to share your pain then. <laughs> oh, yay. Only yay. if you, only if you want to. <laughs> but yes. Uh, Please torture yourself. <laughs> I know that I know that you like to watch uh, bad media sometimes, so and this will certainly give it. There's a lot to talk about. It's it's definitely bad in an interesting way, at least. So that's I think always a plus, as opposed to being bad in like Mark watched Mortal Kombat yesterday, um, and I feel like there's probably a lot less to talk about on that movie. Yeah, the uh, the roommates also. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's your that. fetish, right, Amelia? <laughs> the roommates watch Mortal Kombat? Yes. Uh, while we were hanging out, doing... Stuff. What the hell were we doing? Oh! We were hanging out with uh, with Brad and Kildar um, and, and Mark on Friday night. And I think I was trying to figure out Minecraft creative mode. Ah. And, uh, because I don't play in creative mode. Uh, it's just because it's just how that works. And, um, and all I heard from them was giggling. <laughs> I'm whisper quiet. What did you do, Cece? Oh. Huh. Okay. Okay. Let's mess with the sound. Can you hear, uh, Pretzel? Try saying something. I raised your volume significantly. Oh, uh, saying something. <laughs> uh, sorry, my brain went to a musical place. Yep, that's the place. Yep. yep. I know you so well. Cool. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, it'd be nice if there's a way to, like, test no. my test audio. Test where everything was? Yeah. Oh. I'm yeah. Sure that, I would hope yeah. that's possible. You know, probably. Okay. So I think we have a workable logo here. I'll need to put fences in uh, the other in between parts. But I kind of want to see if I can. Uh, Make this a little thicker, um, and then kind of get it at the same height as the. Oh, that works! That works! All right, cool. Okay, it's a little like blocky, but I think the trade-off is worth it. Pretty cool. And it shouldn't be too hard to tweak the upstairs either. Okay. Hey, Rad! Hello and welcome! We are making Wonder Woman sim symbol uh, while dressed as Wonder Woman. <laughs> Just doing wonder stuff. I'm uh, trying to make the build not hate me with mixed success. <laughs> it is wonderful. Okay, cool. Now, the middle is a bit squished, but the top and the bottom are, um, they match. And we have a point on the W, which was bothering me. <laughs> So I was thinking instead of doing a regular color challenge inside and making it yellow and red and blue like we've been doing, I thought maybe I would try like putting Greek columns inside and doing like white and gold for the interior. 
cool. Yeah. So that was my plan. I don't need that in here. We're just gonna do that up here with the fencing. Oh, <laughs> I have to fix this now. Okay. Now let's see if it'll let me just bloop it out or if it'll get upset. Okay, it got a little upset, but not that upset, so I'm still gonna do it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna bloop it out. Oh no, oh, it didn't like that. I'm excited for this level of chaos. <laughs> I don't know what you've done exactly. <laughs> I I changed the shape. Instead of having it be a single diagonal, I put two diagonals so it would look more tapered, and I didn't do that uh, uh, on the upper part. So now it's it's freaking out. <laughs> so this should actually oh. I have to draw it manually, uh, like, like this. Yeah, and then hopefully it'll let me uh, knock off the end. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing over here. Hopefully. Can't with you. There we go. So you said you watched uh, Wonder Woman Bloodlines. And I did. You've been really, you've been really excited about that. Yes, uh, I have. I, you know, I felt it took me a long time to like recover from Wonder Woman 1984, but I've been back with a vengeance. I was excited to watch Wonder Woman because I um, it's actually not the first time I dressed up with Wonder as Wonder Woman. I dressed up as Wonder Woman like as a as an elementary school child for Halloween, um, and. I've been, I read the, uh, part of the Ruka run of Wonder Woman recently, uh, as in like the past five or six years, and, uh, I really liked it, and so I've been on like a Wonder Woman kick lately, and then it was slightly derailed <laughs> for 1984, but we're back! We're back now, and we're better than ever. There is, there is something so, uh, uniquely wonderful i think about um getting like re-excited about something that you you really enjoy yeah um, you're like oh that's right that's why this was awesome <laughs> uh like for example for a while i had stopped reading x-men comics because they were not good <laughs> um and when the x-men blue gold and red uh came out and the, the tom taylor uh, run particularly on X Men Red came out, and Jean Grey was awesome again. And they had her just kind of show back up and be like, you know what? No, I'm tired of being the whole universe's punching bag. We're done with this now. Um, it was really exciting. So I'm glad that you kind of got to like get like re excited about it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad to. Uh... I, there's a lot that I love just about the whole idea of Wonder Woman. Uh, and I found an article recently. Hold on, I'm gonna look it up. Okay, I'm gonna send you this. So, an interesting thing about Wonder Woman is that um, since the Ruka run in, um, 2016, I want to say. Wonder Woman is canonically bisexual. Yes. Yes. But uh, because that was such a recent change, um, relatively, relative to her history, and um, because of other stuff that was happening in the comics at that time, uh, shipping-wise, um, she has not had a female love interest outside of Thermoscura. So... That's not like, that's not the best type of representation, but I think that it does at least set up a future for her to date women. Um, and uh, part of the reason why, so like she, she basically, she dates Steve Trevor and then she dates like Batman and Superman. <laughs> and that's it. But they do, uh, they do surround her with queer women, which I think is nice. They did a, 
update on Etta Candy, who was in the uh, Wonder Woman movie, um, played by... Oh, is that the, the woman that was, like, her assistant? Yeah. I loved her. Oh, my God. She was so darling. Yeah, so she's she's really great in the movie. And then um, in the comics lately and, and in Wonder Woman Bloodlines, uh, she is a black lesbian. Um, mm-hmm. So they, they're they kind of updating the representation there. And they also surround her. She has a lot of relationships, like, friendships with other women. And, mm-hmm. and they tend to be, like, pretty strong relationships um she's not as you wouldn't know this from justice league but she she's not a woman who doesn't have any female friends which i think is also another great thing about wonder woman comics and in fact wonder woman bloodlines is like steve trevor's the only dude and he's most not the only dude there's also a a, another male character who's a minotaur (laughs) Uh, but other than well. Steve Trevor and the Minotaur, it's basically just like gals getting stuff done, <laughs> which is it's pretty refreshing. I have sent you a link. Um, it says Wonder Woman's ten best girlfriends who aren't superheroes, but they mean like girls who are friends, not girlfriends, which I find a little <laughs> annoying. <laughs> She's had some pretty funny love interests over the years. She was also, um, oh, that's right. I posted something in the Discord recently about, uh, there was- Did? Yes. uh, It was about a woman who wrote Wonder Woman comics. If, if Dinah and Babs are not (coughs) on this list somewhere. Oh, these are like secondary characters, not like- Yeah, they're from her comics. Oh, okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. You know, I really loved whoever did the line art. I think this is her New 52 run. Mm. It was either her New 52 run or her um, her Rebirth run. I love the interior paneling on that. So you get you get quite a few different versions of Wonder Woman. Yeah. Um, and in the movies, you get... I, I, I mean, ironically, for Wonder Woman 1984, but in... In the original um, Wonder Woman movie and in the Justice League movie, you really get, like, Wonder Woman as, like, a woman having it all. So she's, like, socially calibrated and has, like, a lot of friendships and she also has a career and she is incredibly fashionable. All the Well, actually, she doesn't have a lot of friendships in, uh, in the... the movie universe but she she looks great all the time she has a career she and she is also following her passion of being like of literally saving the world and she doesn't really seem to have to compromise very much doing any of those things uh but then sometimes in the comics what you get instead is this kind of like she's a bit messier she's kind of like a little bit loud a little bit messy a little bit out of touch and she punches things a lot and she has a lot of friends <laughs> I mean, that's kind of living the life, isn't it? Yeah, so it's funny the way that you could get different different takes on her. Yeah, I've enjoyed that. Okay, I have to remove the colors. I'm going to do half walls, I think, because I don't, I'm not going to find... I like this to be a red trim, and I don't think I'm going to find it in a fence, because as we discovered previously we don't have a lot of good red fence options let's see if this works and then i'll decide if i want to do it all the way around i like the stripey wallpaper you know i feel like that wallpaper has come in more and more clutch recently i just i just used it on my last build but it looks really good here because it looks like gold stripes on like kind of w So I need the, oh, nope, yeah, this. And then I need it in red. Oh boy. (laughs) All right, well, I can work with this. Yeah. But that looks cool. Okay. Yeah, because I want to get, I want to get the red in there, but I, uh, just didn't like the it's funny because it ended up being a fence anyway but here we are (laughs) 
Ha. One of, uh... Oh, it's automatically filling it in. Sort of. That. Look at look at the Sims almost doing something nice. Oh, and it stopped. <laughs> well, it was nice while it lasted. Maybe if I maybe if I do this a little bit here, it'll automatically do it for the rest of them. Let's see. Let's see if it likes me. It doesn't like you. Shh. We'll pretend. <laughs> Okay, now it's cooperating. Just needed a little extra help, that's all. Um, so speaking of awesome- Ooh, The Nevers is live with episode three. I am caught up. I have seen episodes one and two. So I'm, I'm ready to watch episode three. I have watched them six times. Would you like to discuss The Nevers and or- I have been trying to watch The Nevers, or talking to you about The Nevers like all week, and I, it just hasn't- Let's discuss The worked. Nevers. I'm gonna make the bold statement of this is basically everything I want out of a TV show. Like, like this explicitly is like everything I want. <laughs> it has superpowers and like a cool mystery and badass women being badass and badass women being badass friends. I am a sucker for badass women in cool cool dresses. <laughs> See my previous sucker. Wonder Woman out of the conversation. I, I know we've been saying um it's Victorian X-Men, and if you've not seen the Nevers, uh it is Victorian X-Men. Um but the way I described it to our, our buddy handful of whimsy. Oh, it's because they have a school, isn't it? Yes, it's because they have the orphanage. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which is, which is, which is ostensibly kind of what Xavier's was. It was always the Institute for Higher Learning, but they were all orphans, so like you know. Yeah. Um, but when I described it to whimsy, I said it was a little like X Men. It was a little like Warehouse 13, and it was um, a little bit of S.H.I.E.L.D. and a little bit of Downton Abbey and I'm just like here for all the crazy shenanigans. Like, yes. <coughs> so, so first of all, or so to, to start with, do you see why I was so intrigued that you and I uh, kind of gravitated to the Nevers and the Irregulars at around the same time in like the same space? Well, but also like I, I why we they, were intrigued. I think they were also released at the same time. They were, that, they were. That thing that seems to happen from time to time where the cultural zeitgeist just decided it was time for Victorian supernatural Superpowers. things. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But I was intrigued that we, I, I knew we would both gravitate towards that because that's kind of like, like you said, you're a sucker for women doing badass things in cool dresses. Like, we don't get to see that. <laughs> um, this is gonna be a very boring front view home. Um, oh, I was actually thinking of rotating it. No, this is don't, a, don't this tempt is a... your fate, dear. Don't tempt your fate. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I also don't think it'll fit lengthways. I was gonna try to do it diagonally, but actually, The Sims would probably hate that. So, The Sims would crash on you. It would just straight up crash on you. Low key impossible. Um, so, <laughs> maybe let's, so let's not. you you watched the first two episodes after your shot. Yes. Presumably. Yes. I meant to watch more of the regulars after mine, but it kicked my ass. Yeah. Well, my plan was to lay in bed and watch TV all day because I would be right, sick, yeah, yeah. but then I actually didn't get sick. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Say this with all, of my, all the love in my heart, but fuck you. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sick. Yes. I love you. And I again, hate you so much. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but that and is like, what happens. Was, like, like, so, like, Mark got really sick. He got and, really but sick, but he got he sick. He ran a fever. He got yeah. sick. And, you know, my mom got it and she didn't have any effects and, and like three other people I know all got their shots as, you know, and we were very excited for that and nobody got sick. So I was like, oh, you know, maybe this won't be too bad. And then I was a little sore, I think, in the afternoon. And it wasn't until I went to go to bed that I got like hit by a bus. I could like, I just 
immediate onslaught of like chills and and everything and i was just like oh no oh no 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 um but i did i did watch this twice more while i was trying to not you know die mm -hmm. um so what what are your initial thoughts how did you find it in comparison to um we're going to talk a little bit more about this on saturday in a slightly different context but i, I do want to get your uh the, apparently my brain has kicked in so this is what's happening okay uh how how did you find it in comparison to like because there it once you get past the surface of i think them being set in the same time period it's not overly similar to the irregulars they're pretty different think. shows they're yeah. very different shows for shows about supernatural powers in victoria <laughs> yeah I, so, I would, yeah. Yeah. So once, once you get past that tagline, there's. Yeah. I would say that the the Nevers is actually feels like a bigger show than the Irregulars. I would say. Yes. That's. It's I got think, a a global phenomenon happening, as opposed to right. What we've what I know of the Irregulars is it's just London right now. Well, it's not that it's just London or that it's global phenomenon, but. Um, the magic in um, the Irregulars is rare and it's individual. There are some individuals and it goes in bloodlines and you might be born this way and so you have magic. And there's, I think, maybe two people at a time, but not at a hard limit, but like in the whole of the world, there's maybe two people that have magic. <laughs> um, that are born with it the rest of them are it's caused by like an unnatural circumstance that like and then the the idea is to correct this and then return to the status quo whereas um with the nevers it's more like um it's more like heroes where there's an event and the event affects the world and then all of a sudden there's a bunch of like boom babies yes <laughs> and now superpowers exist in the world and it's about society learning to cope with a group of people who historically didn't have power in society suddenly yes. developing suddenly power. having power in society through getting superpowers does that make sense yes yes because yes. these people have superpowers society now has to care about them when society did not before and I believe even one of the, 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 not the first scene, but one of the first scenes is that council meeting where mm -hmm. they even say, like, it is not, uh, they're afflicted because no, no gentlemen of repute or whatever terminology they use. So it's not, a, like, it's, they frame it as, like, it, it was a bamboozle. Like, they it tricked was a us by attacking us through these people that we never thought to care about. <laughs> Yeah, it was quite rather. It's it's quite radical. I was I was yeah. very excited about it. And um, yeah, true and penance give me such um, Kaylee and Inara vibes, and I yeah. loved their dynamic so much in, in Firefly. I think that's very true, and not like not as in Mrs. True, but that's a very accurate comparison because um, Amalia is, I think, very much a like. While she's not a, a sex worker like Adara was, um, she is very much like the woman who has like experienced the world and the things that the world does to you to like yeah and to make you this way. Yes, to make you. I guess I'm trying to find language that's not like negative because I don't mean like the been unkind to her and she's a little i think you can say she's a little more jaded yeah jaded exactly and um prudence is penance penance sorry <laughs> i keep i keep i keep wanting to call her penny and like i'm like that's not a time appropriate nickname but, but, <laughs> but penny yeah and so penny has yet to be worn down by the world yet you know one of the things that, that really interested and me i guess I guess I, I just want to mention that there's a different kind of strength in that. It's a strength yes. that she is then able to provide to um, 
Amalia. I think that we saw, you know, it's not that she's unaware, I don't think, of the cruelties of the world. So, like, with, with Kaylee, for example, mm -hmm. I always got the impression that Kaylee was a little sheltered. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even though she had been around the, the worlds a bit, she had been around a little while, she is not what I would have called uh, a, a naive or an innocent character, per se. But she was very sweet. She was very sweet. Um, but, you know, I don't... I, I do get the impression, I think, that Penance is a little bit more socially graceful than Kaylee was, perhaps, maybe? Um, she's definitely aware, I think, of at least uh, courtly court rituals, right? She They go to the, the party, and she's aware of what's happening in this party and, and the, the bells and whistles and things. Which I thought was interesting. Um, but she's but not I, as aware as Amalia. So, like, Amalia no, is playing the Game of Thrones. Yes, Amalia is playing the Game of Thrones. I'm yeah. Like, Yo. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> I would not bet against her. Um... So there's a lot of there's a lot of like social stuff happening in, in this, and it's also so very fascinating. Um, and Ash brought up last week that a lot of the the characters do kind of hem on the the side of neurodivergent, which I also <laughs> found very interesting. Um, a lot of the characters are dealing with uh, mental stuff in you know not in so much because we didn't have the terminology for these things in, what is it, 1896? Mm -hmm. um, we didn't have, you know, words for PTSD and depression. Um, Augie is definitely symptomatic, is definitely displaying symptoms of things. Which one is Augie? Um, bird guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't tell you specifically what is going on with him. But he did strike me as someone who was maybe not neurodivergent. Certainly someone who didn't fit in, or is not neurotypical, or for some other reason doesn't fit in well with society. He definitely... He has, like, mannerisms. Had, he has a mannerisms. I won't backseat diagnose. I've yeah, I don't, seen I don't wanna, that behavior. I don't want to actually, like, you know... Yeah, because these characters are not explicitly stated to, to be the things, I don't want to... Uh, say that they are or they are not, but they do display a lot of those And um, I think even behavior. without a specific diagnosis, you see the struggle that yeah. he has to fit in and understand what's expected of him and how yeah. how he has to... Something that I think is happens a lot even without a specific illness is the, the way he has to kind of fake it to, to survive in society. If that makes sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. And I'm, I'm so fascinated. I, I truly love all of those characters. Like they're, all of them are great. Um, I know you don't watch it, but I know your parents do. Uh, Lord Masson is a character, he's in The Crown, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who does he play was, in The Crown? He plays the Queen's private secretary, oh. uh, Tommy LaSalle. Oh. And in season one and two, I believe? And he was fantastic. So when I saw him, I was like, oh, we are in for a treat. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's just, there's so much, like, tasty little things to grab onto. Like, I want to talk about the touched, and I want to talk about Malady, who is a fantastic oh, antagonist. That's, that's another thing. Uh, the way they talk about the touched, where they're very much like, it's not an affliction it's a difference we're not you know they're very whenever they talk about the touch they always talk about how we're not like it's not an illness it's not a um a way that we're damaged it's a thing that's happened sometimes this particular uh talents turns that a touch can have may make their life difficult but being touched in and of itself is not like a, a tragedy or yeah. or yeah. 
That language really stood out to me. Um, and I love that one of my favorite shots so far, and I think it was so telling about um, the characters, was the end of episode one. And I won't say what the reveal was, because there was a reveal and what the event was. But you get to see everyone kind of becoming touched. And you see uh, Penance is actually like actively reaching for that little moment. And that was such a defining little bit for her character that I saw that and I was like, oh, oh, you're going to be just the most precious bean. Like, <laughs> um, but I like the language around the touch. I love the way that the characters um, communicate about their abilities, um, which has been... Um, really fun. Uh, Brian and I have talked about it a little bit, especially around uh, Penance's abilities where she she sees or she hears the energies of what the things want to be. Mm. They tell her what they want to be. And I was like, that is such a wonderful way of like describing what is clearly technopathy. Mm -hmm. Like she's a technopath, and we don't we haven't seen a lot of technopaths in media. It's really her and Micah from Heroes. Mm. Um and I think there might be a couple in some games that I'm not super aware of. Um Technopathy has a different power from like uh controlling yeah. yeah so so when we're gonna talk a little bit of an incident report guys now so uh here's some spoilers for you <laughs> um so when when brian played an upcoming character there was a distinction between technopathy and um technokinesis basically which is the ability to talk to machines and the ability to um use machines to to do the item like to do the thing a lot of people say that uh tony stark is a technopath um which is probably like the most obvious like example i i would say um except that tony's not a mutant he's just a super genius who has some super harsh tech um same with the vision the vision i guess is a technopath and that he's also a machine and can communicate um yeah this this says that there are technopaths in marvel and that's unless we've changed maybe mercedes knight mercedes knight i would say might be actually an actual technopath um people don't talk to machines necessarily the way they talk to plants or, right. or like animals right and so or the way aquaman talks to fish right and Micah did. Micah and Heroes 100% talked to machines and then got the machines to do what he wanted to the same way you would do with a more traditional um, telepathic power like, you know, telepathy or mind control. Um, and we see him do this. And we, we're starting to see Penance kind of exhibit that behavior as well, um, which is super cool. Also, she is just so pure. So sweet. <laughs> she reminds me a lot of Kaylee and uh, Gemma Simmons, which are which shouldn't surprise me because those are both Whedon shows. Mm. Um, and that's kind of his... And, and a little bit of Claudia from, from Warehouse, which also explains a lot. Um, but the, 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 the language of the powers and the, the language of the ripplings... Um... And when I heard tr uh, Amalia talk about the ripplings, I know she was saying ripplings like in a pond. And I know that like time is a river, uh, like that's like a common thing. But I, my first thought was actually um, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Because mm. it's rippling is not a word you hear a lot. So whenever I hear it, it kind of stands out a little bit more to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also really intrigued by um the quick turnaround in her dynamic 
with uh, Frank Mundy, the investigator. I enjoyed some I was of about the conversations they had. How do you like Frank? Because I know you like detectives and and <laughs> events of that nature. Um, I haven't seen enough of him to know if I like him as a detective. Okay. But I find him interesting as a character. So he, the first time you see him, he comes off as kind of a brute. But he's a little bit, more, right? Yeah, but he's more complex than that. And he's also not like, I don't know. So far, what I've seen of his reputation doesn't match what I've seen of his character, if that makes sense. Yeah, I. We keep being told that he's this. He, I keep violent, hearing that he like beats brutish. up witnesses and stuff. Yeah, but, but like, the one we've actually seen throw punches is Amalia. Oh my God, so many punches! Jesus Did I mention that so I like women punching? punching? <laughs> you do. You do love it when they throw punches. I do. I do. Um. Yeah. So supposedly he's this like super violent, terrible cop. This was actually the reason that I couldn't enjoy Luther. Um, okay. Because he's actually a very bad police officer, and it made me uncomfortable. <laughs> um, okay. But which Frank actually is a pretty decent. Well, he seems cop. To, well, so far, he seems he's to, competent. He's competent, I think, and he appears to be. It's possible that his bad reputation is because he attacks the non-socially acceptable side. Like, I don't know. So I, I don't understand how to square his reputation in the beginning of the episode with the choices that he makes later. I, I haven't actually seen him beat up a witness. So they, they show him doing something kind of sketchy later in that they're, I'll just say, they, they like raid a house that maybe they shouldn't have because they don't have like proper evidence. But he does that because of pressure from above. So, you know, that that doesn't, that's not him being a rogue cop who doesn't play by the rules. That's him exactly playing by the rules. <laughs> Do you think that the show itself is trying to present certain characters in an unreliable like do you think like the narrative itself is trying to present certain characters as more unreliable like than than we're actually seeing them like do you think that the narrative itself is trying to kind of disjoint our opinions on those well I because Malady is not who I thought she was going to be at all I uh I really enjoyed the scenes with Amalia and Malady actually um that there was a real um, I, I know that, that because of who Malady is, she's supposed to be, um, <laughs> a dark cloud cuckoo lander, uh, <laughs> where she's basically, yes. you know, she's supposed to be, like, there's not, there's a logic to her that maybe, there is. that the dialogue attempts to hide, I think, they, so they give her very nonsensical dialogue, to make her seem crazy. But she... <coughs> she's not. Oh, I mean, she is, but she's not. Like, it's it's complicated. If you pay attention, if you actually pay attention to what she's saying... She's, she's saying... She gives, she gives you information. But the yes. way that she phrases that information and the dialect and the words that she uses makes it hard to parse. But she does actually make sense. She does. And they... they Make it in a way that's easy for her to be dismissed because she the way she talks doesn't appear on its face to make sense. So you think that you can ignore her, but you can't ignore her because she is actually giving you information that you need. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, I, um, I really thought a lot about the way that they chose to have her talk compared to the way they chose to have Mrs. Poole talk in Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Okay, um, yeah. It's yeah, a yeah. different type of um it's a different type of quote unquote nonsense. It's I almost think. like she's speaking in a cipher. Yes, it is. So Mrs. Poole is is directly speaking in a cipher. She's speaking in a yes. specific cipher, and the fact that it is a cipher is a plot point. 
Um, yeah. Um, Malady is also speaking in a cipher, but it's not a direct cipher. It's more like there's a, a barrier between, like, yourself and and the content, <laughs> and it, it has to pass through the filter of her perspective, and that filter twists it in a way that makes it unrecognizable. But it's not like a one-to-one type cipher the way yeah. that, that Mrs. Poole was. But the results are the same. In the, in the fact that both of them are dismissed. Both of them are misunderstood. And I think um, probably when we see her the clearest is when she's it is that moment she has with Amalia Mm. and I'm I'm looking forward to it because I think there's gonna be a lot we've started to kind of peel back the layers on her dialogue and there is a shifting to her cipher so it's it's not even just that there's a barrier between us the audience and what she's saying Every time I think I've, I've figured out what she's saying, it's, it's almost like she's taken like a step to the left. Mm-hmm. So we have to kind of, in addition to almost, you know, break through that initial translation, we have to also kind of chase her dialogue. Mm-hmm. And it started kind of unraveling itself a little bit more. So I think that there's going to be even more layers as we go through the next couple of episodes. Yeah. That I'm I'm really excited for. I think it's also interesting um, that where each woman starts uh, during the event that leads Mm -hmm. to them becoming touched has a lot to do with where they end up, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Uh, One of the things I, I told Brian is I liked how, so far, all of the the turns that we've seen are... and they they have stated explicitly is nothing has been repeated so they're completely individualized um, but they also like seem to enhance something about those characters in those moments when they were touched and if I remember correctly right before um, Penance? Penance right before Penance is touched she fixes a water pump She's fixing a water pump. Yep. Yeah. Um, she's, and she's doing. She's like MacGyvering that as well. It actually really reminded me of the scene in the live-action Beauty and the Beast movie where they have where... Belle create this like machine to do laundry for her. Where she's the inventor. Yeah, it yeah. reminded me a little bit of that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I. I quite, I quite like it. It it gives just like a little extra to those characters. Um, I, I'm not, there's, there's like, like, there's like, like, obviously the, the main kind of three, I would say, uh, touched women, Malady, um, Amalia, and Penance uh, are direct one-to-ones. I'm still struggling to figure out some of the others and how those tie in exactly um the little girl who's super tall for example well do, um, who do we see in the flashback we see those three women and there's a fourth woman isn't there or is there, it is it actually augie that we see we see we see augie and mrs bidlow mm-hmm. and i do, we see lord masson and, and i think we see lord masson's the little granddaughter girl. Yeah, we see. I I don't know if that's uh, the same little girl. Um, what is her name? Um, I'm trying to like find things that won't give me spoilers. <laughs> uh, do 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 Oh, we see Mary Brighton. Oh, is Mary Brighton the strength woman? Uh, Mary Brighton is the singer. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get the sense she's going to be important. Okay, so I was thinking of Primrose Chataway, but I don't actually think that that's the little girl from the... 
Um, Ariel, basically, the, yes. <laughs> yes. In a big way. <laughs> um, I know it's probably just her name, but she reminded me of uh, Sarah Brighton. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a lot happening at that time with opera and the music space. Tell me your thoughts, and... Alethea. <laughs> Yeah, you yes, can... please tell us your thoughts. Please tell us your thoughts. Um, the... The Shatter... The woman who does the Shattering... She's fascinating as well. That is... Uh, Mrs... Do we think Mundy is a feminist? Mrs. Best. Mrs. Do Best, I, yeah. We, you know... I, I would classify him as pre-feminist. I don't think Mundy is a guy who would classify himself as a feminist. But I do think that he sees at least uh, Mary Brighton as a full person. And his response to Amalia as well is um, interesting. You know, he doesn't get mad at her. No, he's more does. annoyed that she's ruining his investigation than anything else. I mean, so it's so hard to talk about this without spoilers. Um, yeah. First of all, the woman that they bring in in, I think it's it's episode two. Yes, I love her so much. I mean, just uh, amazing. Desiree. Everything. Desiree. Desiree I, love I love her so everything much. About her. Um, and he is mad about that because um, <laughs> yes. the way that he's forced to be vulnerable. But when Amalia pulls some stuff after that. And we don't see what his reaction is, but based but on the results of that action, yeah, he's like, he doesn't seem to waste a lot of time getting mad about what she chose to do. She just, he just takes the information that he gets and he deals with it, you know, and he does it. There's no drama about like, how dare you, blah, 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 and this is my investigation. Like, he just makes the caller, like, right? He, I, I don't know. So here's the thing. I don't know that we can properly qualify him as a, a proper feminist because I think this is still pre first wave feminism. But this, I, I do think he is a pre feminist. I do think that of all of the male characters we have seen, I would say um, Frank and and Augie are probably and um, and Horatio. Oh my god, I love him so much. I, oh, love, Horatio, I, lo yeah. I love all these characters. So, He's so sassy. I love Alethea him. Alethea said, in episode one, when he told the worker, I'm not going to let you bury her about the murder victim, and in episode two, he was physically uncomfortable hands. saying the phrase proper the feminine restraint to her tomorrow. while you're very pro fem to me. Yes. 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 Yeah. That's another. He could have ignored the, the woman the in the first episode. You, you see him standing up for a woman the first time you see him. Um, and that's important, I think. Yeah. That's actually the first thing that you see him do. And it's a woman that he didn't have to care about. That he, it was not his job to care about. Once he figured it's, out what was going on in the case, he it realized it actually woman wasn't his job. No one cares about. Yeah. In that scene. And that then I he could have just written off. Yeah, and he doesn't. Yeah. yeah. But I, I would I would qualify him as pre-feminist. Or or if we want to say feminist, I would say I would say yes. All of the <laughs> men in this show, honestly. Well, not all of them. He also, well, the ones I care about. So he I don't know if I would say that Augie's right. a feminist. I, I, I don't think I'm... Augie has examined... Well, he might be. I, I don't think Augie has examined his privilege very much yet. I think he's going to, though. Yeah, I think he's going to go on a journey. I'm confident that he'll get there. I mean, he does, you know, I suppose he does support his sister, I guess, but that's not really, like, a choice that he's making. I as think much she, as, that choice is being made for him, yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, I don't know that he maybe begrudges his sister that, but he's not enjoying this experience. Yeah, that's he, true. He comes off as, um... He's... he's he stands up for say... Mary Brighton's reputation too. Yes, when you hear his inner thoughts, he he's upset about being vulnerable, and he's upset about um ab about Brighton's reputation. Well, he he has a lot of feelings about the event that are negative, but he refuses to let those feelings be a reflection of of the woman that he's discussing. Uh, he comes on himself. As yes, well. they imply that he's they imply that Augie's sort of bullied into supporting his sister yes so i don't know that that's like 
So what's what I what I'm interested to see um, out of Augie going forward is because now we've pit him and um, shit. What's his name? The Cad. Oh my God, Jesus. Am I wrong? No, but God, um, Hugo. Yes, Hugo. Boy, this guy. <laughs> Boy, this guy. Um, I'm intrigued to see how their paths. Cause I don't think. I, I think that we're clearly supposed to have uh, Hugo as the foil to Augie, and where Hugo is going to err more on the side of of the touched and and align more with with penance and and true um and presumably eventually frank mundy uh where hugo is going to continue to doing uh they're um they're doing what i think that they're doing with the i don't know how to say this without getting us flagged by twitch but they're like selling touched right that's what the, the, they're, they're selling they're, an experience, uh, no, and that experience I meant may the people. I meant the people. I oh. don't know how to at, say at the parties. No, not at the parties. Hugo? I I got the imp the impression that he was selling people. Oh, I did not get that impression. Okay. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was that kind of trafficking or just regular trafficking. I think there's more going on there. I think that the I people thought. with the buzz saw might be doing that. They most certainly are. Uh, but I don't think that Hugo is doing that. Hugo is okay. definitely selling uh, an, an experience. He is exploiting touched for adult entertainment purposes. Is that is that within yes. terms of service? <laughs> I think that's within terms of service. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yes, I, yeah. I, that's true. That's true. Um, I will say there was only probably one scene I didn't like, and it was more because I expected the reveal. He is a selfish and manipulative person, uh, and I don't trust him, and I don't know what his motives are, but I'm curious to find out. Yeah. But I believe um, Augie is in danger. I think Augie's in danger. I think Augie's in big not Not danger. like in, like, like, in, like, physical danger, but, like... He, I think uh, he, there's, he's there's, falling in with bad companions. <laughs> I, I think he's gonna wind up um, either at the orphanage or so they they've made a couple of points about Augie, I think, um, which is he is the male heir to the Vidlo fortune. Um, try that she might. Lavinia cannot inherit that money. That oh, estate really? is not hers. No, she cannot inherit that. Um, it is Augie's money. It is Augie's fortune. It is Augie's whatever they have. It is Augie's. Hmm. Um, she cannot inherit that money, which is why she has that little line to him um, at the end uh, or during the party. About, when she's ruining my life. When she's ruining my life. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I'm so mad. I was so mad at her. Very upset. Um, Very upset. <laughs> so bad. Oh. <laughs> and she's Irish to boot. I was just like, and the fact that those two things are on equal footing, I was like, oh, well, so well, at this time, I wanted to throw a punch her during that little speech. I know. Listen, it's, I'm not saying that what she said wasn't necessary, but, and you know, the when, when Augie waiting. says, "You always see the worst in people," and she said, "I've yet to been proven wrong." You know, I, you know she's not wrong. She's not wrong, and, and I don't agree with what she said, and I, I, you know, I don't like what she said, but it, it's not like she doesn't have a point. But what she, she yeah. said it's so mean. She didn't have to be that mean. She could have yeah. been kinder delivering the hard truths, is what I'm saying. She'd be <laughs> Lavinia to, like, her, if she... her only, you know, surviving relative, someone that she theoretically cares about, theoretically. Yeah, I... So I'm, I, I think there's a couple of steps here. So technically, technically right now, in, in the political scheme of things, assuming that the Bidlows and the uh, Swans are of equal social standing, 
technically, socially, um, Augie has as much pull as Hugo. As as the two of them are the male heirs. Technically, he has more pull because he is the first son rather than the remaining son. I believe his name is also slightly better based on some things that were said. Uh, he has so many names. I... I almost smacked Augie myself. I was like, dude, no, don't don't pull out like all five of your name. Like, don't do that. Don't there's no need for that. What'd they say his name was? Uh Augustus Cyril Aspinall Bidlow. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Like Technically Hugo's the second son. He it, he is the surviving heir. Yes, he is the surviving heir, which why, which is why I say that they are the um, they're equals there. Um, but it's also kind of like it, it. So there's a reason why Hugo is being allowed to behave the way that he is in society. If Augie was pulling this stuff, the Bidlows would not have social standing mm. um, because of the way that birth order. And e- so, even though that Hugo is now the surviving heir, and that it his seems like father has society lost his mind. His society, it sounds like your father, his father has dementia. Yeah, it does sound like his father has it dementia. Seems pretty like severe dementia. They just assume because he's the second son, he was raised wrong, <laughs> because yeah. he wasn't raised to be the first son. So now they're like, well, they're That's working exactly with what they it. got. <laughs> That's exactly it. Uh, and everyone seems to have really liked Which is... his brother. Mm. But also, um, it's a bit rude. <laughs> but also, it is a bit rude. It's, to just assume swan. somebody's trash. Like, come on. Yeah. Um, I mean, Hugo's kind of trash, though. Like, let's let's be real. Oh, I want to sure. like Hugo, but he's, he's earning trash. it. <laughs> I want to like Hugo, but he's making it. Because the, know... actor, the actor's so charming that I want to like him. I, I think the actor's doing a great job making him charming and incorrigible. And he's fine. He's going to be fine until he hurts my baby boy, Augie. And then I we're not going to be forgiven. so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo. Yo. He seems to at least come by that part of it, honestly. <laughs> like, so far, every bit of uh, Hugo's reputation has been earned. Every bit of it. Holy shit. Um... I want to see more of Horatio. I want to see more of the Doctor. I oh yeah, more Horatio's of his... great. Yeah, he um and the Beggar King. Oh my God, the Beggar King was so fun. Cause it looked like when we met him or when we saw him in the during the event, it looked like he had a wife and son. Hmm. And he's so snarky. He's just so snarky. I love him so much. That uh that scene was uh part of the uh, Amalia gives zero Fs montage oh that I've created for myself in my mind. <laughs> Amalia has, gives zero fucks and has no chill. <laughs> I can just, like, see all of the, the characters' like blood pressures rise every time she does something stupid. I can just, like, see it. Like, Horatio and Penances in particular, I can just see them go, oh, no! <laughs> oh, god. I, uh... I definitely get the Jessica Jones reference for Amalia. Yeah, right? That yeah. oh that I, I was trying to think of who else I had referenced with her. And I couldn't I couldn't think of it. So yeah, it was Jessica Jones. There's visually she looks a little bit like uh, they look, Kristen Ritter. I thought they looked exactly the same, which so it means that <laughs> they must be minorly similar. <laughs> they I can see she's a different like chin shape, I guess, or a little They have bit. a different they have a different chin shape. But yes. I think they have a similar nose and Maybe eyes, and maybe the way they're holding their mouth. In they the... do their hair very similarly when, yeah. when uh, Amalia's hair is loose. Plus, they're both similarly self-destructive, so they behave similarly in some respects. Amalia yeah. definitely has it more together. They both Jessica really Jones. like punching things. Yeah, but she they, she uh, has self-destructive tendencies. Also, experts in drinking <coughs> hard and kicking ass. Yes. Uh, Melody speaking of riddles. The fascinating thing about that is when you go back and rewatch the episodes, it's like giving yourself a decoder ring for her previous album. It yes. is. It really is. It truly, truly is. Which is why I'm 
So, so here's here's the thing. Here's the one thing that really vexed me. Vexed. So we have. Sorry. What? <laughs> well, you know, vexed is a. I mean, the it's a period appropriate word. <laughs> it is. That's why I used it. Uh huh. Um. Thank you for catching that. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, it is. I, it's a, I love that word too. It's a great word. Mm-hmm. Um. But so um. So we have two conflicting almost her dialogue levels, and is I, basically a clever form of foreshadowing and I love me some good foreshadowing yes it, it very much is it's so oh my god um, so we get Malady's comments and, and Malady's dialogue which is which are brilliant like truly these are this is some of the most intense written and and well thought out dialogue I think I, I've seen in a TV show recently and then we get that very unsubtle um, brick line from Lord Masson to Hugo about his brother and like like I understand it was supposed to be like this weight drop but it was so it, it felt very uncrafted and unpolished I what? thought that the he it didn't seem very socially adroit he did no. not come out of that feeling like looking to the other people sitting in the gentleman's club like oh sorry the whole idea of a gentleman's club anyway we're we're like rich men in victorian times go to be useless i can't even the, lo- the uh, lunch club the lunch club <laughs> gentleman's club is something different it's only men in there and it's only men of a certain standing i don't you know I assume it that is. it's... Yeah, anyway, they actually have one of those in Gotham by Gaslight. Bruce Lane owns one, and he sneaks Catwoman into it. And then of they have some... Yeah. Some of the dialogue around it's a little gentler, essentialist, and kind of crappy. But uh, th- he's, the fact that he sneaks Catwoman into it's pretty funny. But the fa- he, he does own one, and he hobnobs with a bunch of dickheads there. <laughs> because that's the only thing you can do in a club like that. <laughs> yeah. You eat and smoke cigars and talk to other men in your social status. It's a, is it a fraternity basically or like, uh, a, it's like a lodge club. It, it yeah, it's a it's a socio political, uh, networking group. Mm. Although it is also probably a source of male friendships. It is. It's where guys go. Uh, so, which weirdly, I think maybe we've lost. Yes. Um. You do know your two sides aren't even now because you have the one following the wingtip and then the other one is just straight flat, right? Yes. Like, you know, I want one okay. part of the museum to be a back room. Okay. Uh, but I, I don't know if I'm going to keep this here or I'm going to make it open. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that you know. Yeah. Um, also, am I the only one who thinks that Mrs. True is not Mrs. True and that she is not a widow? Uh... Am I the only one who thinks she's lying about that? I don't think that's, I don't think that's her true identity. Uh, Christ. But yeah, that's. I would say I don't think that's her her real name. I don't know about anything else in her past, though. I mean, I, I don't know if true is her is her fake name. I just. Well, I don't think so, Amalia is her real name. I or think Amalia else is she her, was using her real a, name, and she was using a fake name at another time. Um. Well. What, what melody The woman who sheds her is... skin. I know. And at first you think it's about the dress. And then you realize that it's so much more than that. It's it's not and it's not nonsense. It's, you, and the brilliant thing about them making you think it's a dress is that when you think she means the dress, you're like, oh, she's stupid. And she, <laughs> she's, she, she thinks that a dress is the same as her skin. But then you find out that it's she's actually brilliant and the thing that she said was profound and so much deeper than just the surface of the clothes melody is so phenomenally written i this I isn't my face cannot. oh yes yes we, yeah yeah i i actually i was talking about this with brian i had a really hard time distinguishing uh amalia and malady in some of the scenes because they look so similar. In the cuts, in the in the flashbacks, it's hard to I, tell which is it which. It is hard to tell which is which, and I'm wondering if there's a tie in there somewhere as well. Mm-hmm. Because those, like I've seen, we've, we've all watched, uh, we watched the extras afterwards, 
and the actresses look so much alike as well. I'm just like, ooh, this is this is intentional. Mm -hmm. I under like this is a thing. Yeah, no, there's there's definitely something going on there. Ooh, I like the column. Yeah. I'm going for like a Greek nouveau vibe. Okay. Oh, so you're gonna use a lot of um glamour? Yeah, I think so. Is that what this door is from? Uh I don't know actually. Doors of it's actually from university. I've used a lot of university stuff too, which I think makes sense given that she works for a museum. Yeah. My theory is that her late husband beat her and she had PTSD and got good at fighting because of that. They definitely are going that, with a domestic abuse They are situation. definitely going with that. Yeah. I'm actually, I, I briefly entertained the idea of uh, the doctor being her husband. Not if it's a domestic abuse situation. Not Horatio. Oh, one of, okay. A, a doctor, uh, a, one of Malady's doctors? The, um, the guy we see... Oh! The, the American. The American, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I briefly entertained that. Because I'm waiting to see... Because there's a connection uh, there as well. Yeah, that <laughs> I know, there's a lot of doctors. The American doctor. Um, I, I'm trying to, to say, um... Which which ones? Without like, you know, without revealing it, because that that that, that was a mind fuck. That hurt yeah, me so bad. They got some of the they reveals got me pretty on this good on that. Me real bad, yeah. But yeah, I'm waiting to see where where those two things have tied in. But yeah, so there's there's been a couple of reveals I think that weren't super surprising, um, but a couple of them have like like smacked me in the face. For having only seen two episodes, there are a lot of things that are reveals, and while not all of the reveals you don't see coming, some of them you don't see coming. Some of them you do not. Yeah. Yeah. And it's wild. Like, like just the amount of difficulty we're having talking about this without, like, saying what the reveals are is intense. There's only six episodes in season one? Yeah. Oh, man. Wait, are there six or there eight? No, I thought there were eight. I will say they get a lot done each episode. They do. There are, it looks like there are 12. There are 12 episodes in season one. Are they taking a break? Are they doing six and six? Yes. Part two will be released. Well, that's very the rude, and they shouldn't do that. That is incredibly rude. Yeah. But they, but it, I'll, I'll take, I'll take 12 episodes over, over six. <laughs> yeah. I because I mean, twelve sounds a little more standard for HBO's. Um... As annoyed, like, there's usually ten episodes of Game of Thrones. As annoyed as I am that they are dripping the episodes, I will say that if they were all available, I would have watched all of them by now. <laughs> yeah, I would already have consumed them. I would not have slept for several days, and I would have consumed them. And the last time I did that is when I watched the first season of Westworld over three days. And I do not advise anyone to do that. I, I cannot in good conscience encourage that. What's the difference between doing 
part one and part two or just splitting into two seasons? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they don't um, make you wait as long where they film them all you at don't, once? You don't wait as long and usually budget. So the way that uh, HBO does their budgeting is you get money for X amount of episodes um, to air over a certain amount of time. And so shows like Game of Thrones had a budget for 10. Um, and... Uh, I think His Dark Materials also does 10. So 12 is actually a lot for game of, for HBO shows. Um, but it's funding and then how often we see them. So presumably we'll run up through uh, mid-June. And then we'll probably be back at it in September or October. We'll get back. If it was the season break, summer. we would be getting six episodes now. And, and then, then six episodes next year. April. Yeah. Yeah. Fine, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> I just, um, I'm mad that I have to wait. They also probably do it to um, give people a little bit of a break in between filming. So usually when you have these big gaps is you you film the first couple of episodes uh, all at once. You will you usually, usually what happens is you do the pilot, you get the pickup order, and then you film like the first half or so. You take a little bit of a break, you finish off the scripting, you start uh, post um, things, and then you pick up a little bit later. So usually those breaks happen around like holidays and things. Uh, in our case, it's probably COVID. Hmm. Well, it might be sometimes they take a break in the summer from real TV. Yeah. To show like summer TV and then they change the schedule again in the fall. That used to be a thing, right? Because, like, I think Wipeout only aired in the summer. Yep. Um, and so you have a spring and a fall TV season, and then in the summer they just show, I guess, I don't know, kids yeah. stuff or whatever garbage they want to show to people who didn't go on vacation. Or Traditionally, that is how it's gone. But with direct-to-streaming, and then also this is Cape, this is, like, this isn't network TV, right? This is cable. Um, and they've always kind of done their own thing. So I'm, I'm curious, because Game of Thrones used to air around Mother's Day. It used, to, it used to air all at once, kind of over in, like, late spring into the summer. It's just very ironic scheduling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm, Mother's Day, huh? <laughs> That's when we're going to air at Game of Thrones? <laughs> all right! <laughs> I mean, Amelia Clark was the mother of dragons. Sure, but like, the amount of people's moms that got murdered in that show. Yeah. Basically all of them. I cannot think of a single mother who survived to the end of that series. What happened to Stannis' wife? Did she, oh, didn't she throw didn't herself she on the fire? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she did. Yeah. She, yeah. She... yeah. 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 Cute pets. Not to derail, but I posted something cute in the pets channel. Ooh. This would be the pets channel of our Discord. Oh, yeah. This girl is 100% being adopted by that cat. That's her cat now. That 100% is her cat now. Oh. That cat is giving a hug. Like a full hug. Yeah. That cat has chosen its person. She is its person. That is sweet. Yeah. That is also a big ass a large cat. cat. Yeah. I, I thought maybe it was just a small woman, but. <laughs> it might be a combination, but that is also a big cat. Yeah. Like his, his head is like the size of my hand. Yeah. I have lost the archaeology table. It's not in skills? You're I, in skills? I am in skills. I, I tried looking up archaeology. I literally just placed this in my last build. I don't know where it went. Good. 
Why don't you go to all and filter by jungle life? Oh, it's in jungle life? Yeah, that'll work. I tried searching archaeology and nothing came up. I don't think it's called archaeology. Uh, yeah. Archaeology is a skill. There it is. Either... I don't know if I can do it tonight. I've been streaming uh, since since 10 a.m. yesterday. Uh, so I would say go ahead and binge it. I'm probably not going to be able to watch it until sometime tomorrow, I hope. God, I hope. It's nice um, to have TV that I can watch on Monday again. That's true. Um... Because then tomorrow night, we'll also be doing our Invincible watch party. Mm hmm And then Tuesday, we're doing something. I just don't know what that something is. And if between now and Wednesday, I can catch oh, up on Falcon and the Winter Tuesday, Soldier. is Tuesday, May the 4th? No, that's next Tuesday. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Next okay. Tuesday is May the 4th. I have it okay. in my calendar. Okay. Don't... <laughs> Phew. <sighs> I'll definitely... Yeah. So, this Tuesday, uh... Just Tuesday. It's just, it's just Tuesday. a Tuesday. It's just a Tuesday. Okay. It's just a Tuesday. <laughs> if, uh... if between now and Wednesday, I can watch the last eight episodes of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, mm -hmm. and also stream, and also do the Invincible Watch Party, mm -hmm. then on Wednesday night, I'm going to be over with the head nerds in charge doing ladies night mm. and then saturday we are going to be having a just chatting stream i believe mm -hmm. uh talking about books and comics and because formats. saturday is free comic book day yes it is so we are gonna have a conversation about comic writing and how it's different from prose writing and what it's been like writing a comic and just that kind of stuff and that has been a conversation that has been requested by a couple of people in chat. Um, that is, but it's also super interesting, I think, to us because uh, it's a process that we've gone through and and one that we we kind of talk about a little bit, but we haven't sat down and really talked to anybody about. I feel uh, like it's a conversation we've gotten at sideways, but not one yeah. that we've approached head on. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm really excited about that because that's something. Um, you and I talked a lot about um, at the very beginning when you decided <laughs> I say the very beginning but there is no very beginning in anything at Attic Room Media um, so yeah like the very beginning of Mythfall was when I was is, 11 so <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> but when a few years ago when when it was decided that we would turn that you would turn Mythfall into a comic. You and I talked a lot about it because comics was not a format that you were super familiar with, um, and we had we had a, I think a lot of really fun, interesting I hope conversations about that. Um, it was definitely you know it was definitely an adjustment. There's not a lot of information out there about how to write a comic. There it's isn't a bit of it's an basically goes kind do of what medium. you want. Yeah, and having had. Like, having taken great pains to study how to write prose and then, like, just to end up in this other medium where it's like, well, basically, you just do whatever works for you. <laughs> and there's no, like, you know, you, when you go to a writing class, they're like, remember, these are not rules. They are just guidelines, except for the grammar. That part's important. Uh, <laughs> and there are rules, but here are a bunch of rules, but also rules are genre and format specific. And we're not going to tell you what to do, but and here's what you have to do. speaking of formatting, there is a way that things should look, but, you know, unless you're, you don't want them to look that way. <laughs> But you and need to know the rules before you can break them, and like this is whole, you know, <coughs> it's a thing you can get a master's degree in. <laughs> yeah. Not that that I did not do that, but people do. People do. And and then to to move to this other medium where it's like, ah, well, you know, it's really between you and the artist, and any any situation that you work out is good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a very it's an experience. <laughs> Um, and I, I think that there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, you know, literature and, and novels and, and prose format have always been accept, kind of accepted by the academic community, where this field of, of comic and 
I'm gonna lump them together for the purposes of this, and I'll probably do the same on Saturday. The uh, comic and fandom studies, because those seem to go hand in hand in how they're treated academically, uh, is very new. It's very recent. Um, I want to say within the last ten years is really when we've we've started seeing it kind of take off. Um, there were things being published before that, but really, um, the last few years is when we've we've seen more and more of that happen. And I don't really know what changed other than um, people in fandoms have decided since you, we do that. You can have absolutely more than one last thought about the nevers. <laughs> You can have all the thoughts about the numbers. I would like to hear your thoughts. Okay, one last one. Uh, did anyone else notice Lavinia's slips of tongue in episode two? She had a couple. Which ones are you referring to? I'm not sure that I did. Uh, I, noticed I, I noticed some, some that tricks she, in her dialogue. Yeah, I noticed that she is not uh, the person I was expecting based on the way characters talked about her beforehand, which I guess is, she has that in common with Frank, right? Uh, <laughs> but uh, other than noticing that she was like super duper mean, I don't think that I noticed uh, any particular slips of the tongue. The us instead of you, oh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I did notice that actually, and I thought it might be because yeah. she's very she's identified herself so much with this cause that she's having trouble separating herself from it. Um, I, I had thought initially that it's because she may be related to the struggle, but I'm now I'm thinking maybe that's not the case. It yeah, it's been. What were we gonna say, Mary? Uh oh. What? Do, were you gonna say something? Maybe you cut out. I, I don't remember. Oh, okay. My my brain has like, I mean it's it's all there, rumbling, rattling around. The oh, it. Jane Espenson. Certain people weren't Jane on Espenson. camera in the opera house scene for a reason. Ooh. Jane Ooh, very interesting. Um, I do love Jane Espenson. She's wonderful. And anyone, if you don't know who she is, she's wonderful. She has worked on basically everything that you have ever loved and you've never realized it. Um, and I'm just going to talk about how awesome she is forever. Uh, she's was a writer on Buffy... Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slater, she submitted scripts to Star Trek The Next Generation, she did Battlestar Galactica and Caprica, she wrote for Torchwoods, Once Upon a Time, Game of Thrones, Jessica Jones, like, there's a reason why we're seeing, I think, all of these, um, these kind of themes pop up again. Uh, drop that link in the, dis the Discord, Ash. Mm -hmm. Bless you. Yes, please do. Um... You have so many thoughts to take. Yeah, they're worth waiting for. When we, when we were doing um, Fahrenheit gaming back in the day, DM Fiat, that was <laughs> that was something. We've done so many things. So many things. So many goddamn things. Um, when we would when we would do some of those reviews, it would be rough to keep up with it. Um, especially like Continuum, which is not, uh, we, what we did a show reviews for a show called Continuum, which was a time travel show, uh, which I had a lot of trouble with because time travel is not really my wheelhouse. Did you drop out again? No, I was asking, uh, Gretchen to take Finn out for a potty. Oh, okay. Bell a little oh, while ago. Okay. Um, so getting, getting those out quickly, I understand where, uh, do we have TV section? We don't have TV, uh, and we don't have a sci-fi section, because I was thinking about posting something in sci-fi today, but then there wasn't one. <laughs> I'm going to make movies and TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it was based on a comic or... The Nevers? Yeah. No, it is... Um... I thought about fan... So do we want to break it out by, like, um, books... Do we want to do fandom as like a general thing or do we want to do like movies and TV and then books? 
let's call it fandom. Yeah. Fandom? I think it's good to have a separate channel specifically for comics because that's also a sign of comics news and stuff like that. But then I that's think true. we should do fandom and then we could post. Because sometimes there's like a, a TV adaptation of a book or something. It'd be silly to talk that's about true. it in two separate places. That's true. That's yeah. True. Yeah, it's true. You're right, you're right. All right. It has uh, been created. I'm I'm basically obsessed with this show now. I spend all week waiting. And like it's also really nice to get like that excited about a show because I don't yeah. think that I've been that excited for a show to air since early Game of Thrones. And maybe when you got me into Once Upon a Time? Once Upon a Time was good when it started. Yeah. It was real good. When it when it when it was good, it was good. When it got weird, it got real weird. It did. It jumped the shark a bit at the end, but the early seasons are so good. And you know what though, I I wasn't even mad because I loved Killian and Emma so much. Like I <laughs> like I love and Regina. Oh my gosh, Regina. Uh, yeah, I've I've needed this level of, of excitement for a while. I want to say like first season Game of Thrones. I don't think I've been this excited since then. Okay. Just thinking about the build for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you, you do what you gotta do, man. It's good to do, you know, every now and then. <laughs> Just, you know, thinking about the builds. <laughs> I, um, I wanted to add the porch area because, um, the inside is so narrow. I thought that That's fair. Space. Frost intro until season two. I don't think of it, you know, which also... Since Into the Badlands with Ultra Head Nick Frost, but you didn't show up till season two. I feel like I'm missing a show that I got excited about. I was pretty excited for Downton Abbey, and then they killed some of the characters that I liked, and then I got real upset. But no one from this show worked on that show, so I feel safe ish. I don't think that Jane Espenson has ever killed a character I loved. Pretty sure. When did she work on Battlestar Galactica? <laughs> this is suddenly important. I believe it was the early seasons, but I could be wrong. That sounded so medicine. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, that's a pretty blanket oh. statement. Okay. So if anyone is curious, <laughs> I tracked it down. Specifically, the this episode of Mary Game of Thrones. Evil. You are evil. You are so, you're so evil. <laughs> um, the episode of Game of Thrones that she wrote was a golden crown where they, Oh, uh, yeah. That, you know, that was a good, uh, result. Yeah. For that guy. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm so, satisfied with how that played out. Yeah. And that, and that, when I think of, like, ep like episodes of the first season from Game of Thrones, like that's one of the ones that I think of is that episode. Yeah. Because it's so wonderful. And Jason Momoa in that episode is so fantastic. Um, side note, if, if Jason Momoa ever decided he was going to murder me, I would be well and truly terrified of that man. Like he is just scary. I love him, but damn. Uh, I'm trying to like, like, I just want a list of all of the episodes that she wrote. Uh, okay. So, we knew she wrote Shindig on, and Firefly. Okay. Okay. Oh, she was a... Oh! Oh, she... She also wrote one of my favorite Gilmore Girl episodes. She wrote The Reigning Lorelei, if anyone likes Gilmore Girls. I think in here it's just me. 
Uh, but that's one of my favorite episodes. Don't remember which one chicken or beef is. Is that Firefly? Yeah. Okay. So she wrote for Battlestar, The Passage, Dirty Hands, Escape Velocity, The Hub, and Deadlock. Which episodes are those? Because now I gotta hunt these down. Because I just I just need to know. She didn't kill my two favorite characters in. in... Oh no! Did she? Did, did she? she? Did she? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! No, no. No, no. I have so many tabs open. <laughs> I, my, I, my suspicions were raised because I'm not sure that you can love a writer that much and have them never kill one of your favorite characters. What's the, okay, okay. This is season three. Is this the episode I'm thinking? I'm trying to like also read this quickly. Okay. I do remember this episode. I don't think it's the one that I think it is, but I do vaguely remember this episode. Okay, so she wrote the episode where Tyrrell goes on strike in Battlestar. Okay. 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 Passage. Which one is Passage? I need- I- Because this is where I'm the most- Like, I'm in the most danger. Mm-hmm. You understand? Oh, yes. <laughs> so many things happen in this episode. Uh... Oh, does she kill Cat? Did she kill Cat? I think she killed Cat. But did- But did I love Cat? Only you can answer this question. I don't think so. Okay. Also, apparently, the details of this episode. Are very different than the original script. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah. Okay. So, so far, so far, I'm safe. Mm-hmm. So far, escape velocity. Which escape velocity sounds? Oh no! I'm just entertained this... by you. Just <laughs> like you're basically you're investigating a murder here. Okay, okay, okay. She wrote the episode after they killed Callie. She didn't actually kill Callie. <laughs> Callie, the character from Battlestar Galactica you named your car after. Yes. Uh, te technically, Chris named my car. Yeah. Um, but yes. The name stuck. The name stuck. Okay. She was an executive producer for... She also wrote for The Batman. The Batman. Which was a kids WB animated television series. Oh! Yeah, she wrote a two-parter for, uh... For that. That's cool. Okay. She didn't... She didn't kill Callie. And she didn't kill Starbuck. And she didn't kill D or Billy. I know that seems like a really long list of characters, but there were so many characters in this show who died. Yeah. It's important. Yeah, I knew you were going to be looking at Galactica for a while. 
it was important. There are a lot, and I don't remember the episodes as well as I used to. Okay, so she also wrote the Ra Razor and the Razor flashbacks. Oh, she wrote for Eureka and Dollhouse. She wrote the pilot for Warehouse. We knew that. Okay, Torchwood. She wrote 31 episodes of Once Upon a Time. That's a lot. Are they all in the same season? Uh, looking now. Gonna go with probably not. I want to thank Wikipedia for listing out the writers, like, for the way these season lists are broken down. <laughs> I appreciate you. Okay. Okay. She, the first episode she wrote, uh, for, it looks like no across several seasons. Okay. Uh, so she wrote... Uh, that still small voice. So the other problem is, is I don't remember, I don't know the names of this show the way I do the other ones, which is also problematic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, in Storybrooke, um, she, okay, Catherine is there. Finn. Okay. The ep it's the episode where Henry gets lost in the mines with with uh, with Archie. I remember that one. Yeah, that was a good one. I liked that one. That was that. I really liked that one. Yeah. Uh, do do, and then she worked on Desperate Souls. Ooh, this sounds. Ooh, oh. She wrote the one after, uh, Sheriff Graham dies. Oh god, does, was he only in seven episodes? Does she write all of the episodes, the episodes after? After characters die? Yeah. That's what it's looking like. She writes like, the episode it? after a show kills your favorite character. Right? She's she's there to help you pick up the emotional pieces. Uh, skin deep. This has to be red, right? I think so. No. <gasps> oh! I think she wrote the one. She wrote the episode that introduces Belle, oh! where uh, Mr. Gold reprodu repro uh, repossesses the florist shop. That's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, did you? And uh, the the proposal with uh, I don't remember who these are, Sean and Ashley. I think that is that Cinderella. I think it's Cinderella. I think they gave Cinderella a name like Ashley. Yeah. Red-handed. She also wrote is that this has to be Red Riding Hood, right? Okay, she wrote the Red Riding Hood episode. I'm sold. Yeah, no, she she wrote a bunch of episodes that I really like. She wrote so many of these. I'm just going to assume that all of my my favorite episodes were written by her. And save myself. But does she introduce Killian? Is the question. Uh, it looks like she also did the episode with um, with Grumpy's backstory. Okay, so here's another thought. Can the touch have more than one turn at the same time? Because at the end of episode one, when turns are being dispersed, some people only get touched by a single thing, and some people get multiples. Uh, so that also um, intrigued me. I noticed that as well because we see um, Amalia get... So, so far I haven't had evidence to, to suggest that they have multiple turns. <coughs> Not to say that they couldn't, just that I haven't seen any evidence that... Um, that they do. That they do. Okay. Oh, she wrote the Frankenstein episode. Ah, uh -huh. after your own heart. After my own heart. Uh, the episode where Cora is introduced and tries to kill Rumble Siltskin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they give her a lot of lot of heavy lifting. 
And it seems like she works with Gwyneth uh, Hoarder Payton a lot. Quite a common fairy. That's, that looks familiar as well. She also started out the, uh, the Neverland arc. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay, so she's definitely written some of the episodes that I really truly loved from Once Upon a Time. Um... Oh, she introduced the Wicked Witch. Is nice. Is this why we have Zelina? Is Jade Espenson why we have Zelina? Because I love Zelina. Zelina was a fun. Uh, she was. She was so a, fun. A fun addition. I always feel bad because I feel like when I think of characters from once that I love, I always forget about Zelina. I don't like her that much on her own, but I liked what she does for Regina. Regina, yeah. Yeah. By herself, she's a little sus, but uh, <laughs> I do really love her with with Regina. Okay. I know you jumped out of Once Upon a Time towards the end, so I'm not going to call out the ones that I don't think that you've seen, but she did a lot of the big ones that I can think of. Oh, she did write one of my favorite uh, Captain Swan moments. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I have a lot of hope for this. Um, because I... There, there are certain writing, writers and writing or creative teams that I trust to do a couple of things. One, tell me a good story. Um, two, and I, I think this may actually become number one. Plan out a story and think it through to c tell me the complete story. Cough, cough, looking at you lost. Loss is not um, alone in that. Huh? Loss is far from alone. Yes, that. Loss is yeah. far. Battle Stars on that list. Um, those are the two, the two biggest um, issues. I, those, the, is there a third one? Those are the two big ones. Maybe characters that you care about. Although um, I think that's actually pretty common for someone to meet a character that I care about and then frustrate me endlessly by. Uh, <laughs> So I, by it's not real, it's, giving that character a satisfying conclusion. Yeah, I. It's real easy to get me to love a character. If I'm watching a show, odds are good I'm watching it because you've written a character that I find intriguing. Um, and I'll I'll watch some shows that I'm kind of met on because I really love the way a character's written or the way that a character's acted or I find them interesting in some some form. Um. But I still want that character to have an, a satisfying character arc, and for the over and for that arc to to kind of fill in a place within the story. Um, shows like you know, Firefly had a really compelling set of character arcs. Um, presumably, it would have had a satisfying conclusion. Everything that we we know about it. Uh, the team over at Stargate has proven to me that they can tell me a story, that they can give me characters that I love, that I'm, I'm willing to to fall like to to check out, hang out with, and I know they can tell a story. Um, the people over at Lost have lost uh, all credibility. They've Most, lost it. Uh, several people over at Battlestar have lost that credibility because now they've pro they've ruined not only Battlestar Galactica. But also dark uh, falling skies. I'm still mad. Still mad, yep. folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I didn't even watch that show, and I'm mad for you. <laughs> um, you, you had to be there. Well, when it came to an it, end, there there was something. You saw about, my suffering. There was something about the the ending of Battlestar that was so isolating in that moment because in the moment I loved it, and then I thought about it and I got mad. Um, but only a few of us at the time were watching it. Like, mm -hmm. you you and Mark weren't really watching it. I think Ash was watching it. Alex was watching it. But Brian wasn't watching it. And so, yeah, like, the majority of our social circle were not. And it got overshadowed, I feel like, by the finale of Lost. Mm. Uh, which also had a very unsatisfying ending. But everyone that I had, watched. That everyone watched. That I had just gotten into. But you guys weren't watching. So I was very alone in that moment because... Uh, Brian hadn't hadn't started watching it yet. You weren't watching it. Mark wasn't watching it. And if you guys aren't watching it, basically it doesn't exist outside my own head. Uh, um, but now you have Twitter. But now I have Twitter. I mean, yeah. I had Twitter when I had those things, but it's not... Mm. I value your guys' opinions more than most of the randos on Twitter. Sorry, Twitter. <laughs> I love you. You are my favorite social media platform. Um... But so I, I don't I don't trust some of those people because they've proven to me that they have these really cool concepts, but if they can't follow through with them, then it doesn't matter how cool that concept is. Because if you can't follow through with it, I'm I'm not gonna get a satisfying answer out of it. And I I want the story. I want you to tell me a story. And if you can't tell me a story, then why am I here? You know? Yeah. Um but Jane Espenson has proven that she's written beats that I love, that I can watch independently of other stories, that I can watch that are part of other stories, um, characters that I adore. You know, I know we're all really mad at uh, Joss Whedon, and we deserve to be, because um, he's maybe the goddamn worst. I mean, um, listen, the competition for the literal worst has is, never been higher. It, that's true. So That's I don't want to. I don't want to say that he's the worst and underplay uh, some people out there who That's are true. actually the worst. In, I don't really want to go comic, into details. But in the uh, comic community right now, he's kind of public enemy number one. He's he's pretty high up there right now within I, the comic. Look, I don't. I just don't feel we have to rank. That's all true. of these terrible dudes on a list. That's true. We can just put That's them in, in an unsorted pile. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, and just um, and when just you know a trash bag maybe whatever. But you what, know, I don't, I don't, I don't need to weigh in on who was the literal worst. But just you know, he's not good. <laughs> what exactly has he done again? I heard rumors about him being a general shitbag. So in addition to being a general shitbag, he uh, was exploitive of the women on his shows, and also I believe was super hella racist and toxic hmm. to uh, the the people of color in the Justice League film? Specifically By, Ray Fisher? I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, if we if we want to go in reverse chronological order, uh, he... Most recently, he's been a dirtbag to... Ray Fisher and... To Ray uh, Fisher. Uh, uh, Ezra Miller? Uh, Gal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I... Sorry, I transposed the syllables in my head, so I was calling her Gail Galdo. <laughs> and that's I was okay. like, that's not right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so both of them, um, that's at least who's speaking about it right now. Um, yeah. Then previous to that, um, he, I haven't heard really anything at all about his time on the Avengers as far as the cast. Although he did bring I us. I haven't heard anything about the cast, no. No, he did bring us um, Black Widow's absolute worst character beat. Uh, then, and that's True. I think when people started questioning his. Uh, feminist credentials because that to me was a pretty big and yeah. pretty obvious like what the hell moment um and then so after he did that people started speaking out about his time on Buffy and Angel and he was a real jerk to Charisma Carpenter uh extensively um and I think he like fired her for getting pregnant and stuff uh and yeah. then he wasn't allowed to be alone with the girl who played Faith on Buffy. I think it was Faith. It was a 14-year-old actress. Um, it was one of the younger ones. Yeah, and he also harassed a lot of people on the Buffy set and was 
generally a toxic creep. And then I guess at around that time, he was cheating on his wife and then gaslighting her about it. And then he wrote something, there's something in writing that he wrote about that time where he says that he was like, he couldn't have been expected to be faithful to his wife because he was surrounded by all of these needy women on set at work on Buffy. Uh, these beautiful needy women or something like that. Anyway, it was, uh... Not great. Yeah, it was not great. Um, but he... I, I don't know the, all the details of what went on with his marriage, but apparently it was... I think it was emotionally abusive. I don't think it was physically abusive. But I've I, heard has been about physical abuse of oh, his wife. okay, okay. Um... I've heard a lot about harassment and gaslighting, uh, and emotional abuse and neglect, mm -hmm. uh, but nothing, nothing physical on the wife, at least. Yeah. Um, or his ex. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty. It's just very disappointing. Yeah, um, and a lot of people are struggling with it because you think of when you think of like people who like like men specifically who write quote-unquote strong female characters who have written kind of a lot of these iconic women in genre um of the re most of the recent characters joss is the one who comes to mind he wrote angel and buffy he did firefly he did dollhouse he wrote the first two avengers movies or he wrote and directed um you know he was going to be working on batgirl and so you have like all these really iconic characters and to find and Oh, he actually did my favorite version of Much Ado About Nothing as well, and it's just the goddamn worst. Um, so it, it, it's, it's been a lot. It's been a lot to, to go through and, and sift through. I've yeah, the so there were some now. some elements. So, like, Buffy's a very old show. Um, mm -hmm. So if you go back and look at it, um, there's some stuff that, in you know, in the, in the the with the eyes of the future, you're kind of like, mm hmm. hmm. Um, but it seems to me, and again, I'm I'm not an expert, but I guess you're here on my channel, so here's my take. Uh, yeah. It seems like Joss Whedon was writing for himself and what he liked, and what he liked happened to be a particular type of story about uh, str women who were strong in a specific way, and the fact that uh, he wrote about women at all was really exciting at that time in the 90s. Yeah. And so then that kind of made him an unwitting, not unwitting, maybe unwitting, but that, that kind of, that was what led him to be held up as a feminist icon. And then once he had the label, people just assumed that he uh, had, you know, that he deserved it, I guess. But he was actually just, like, he wasn't writing for women necessarily. So it was not an accident necessarily, but like, it's just how that happened to work out, and then it turned out later that that was not, like, yeah. a choice or a responsibility, necessarily. It was just, uh, just a fluke, I guess. But I think, I do think the end result of it is that there are more stories about women that exist now because those stories were written, even if they were flawed or the creative process behind them was flawed. Um, they still, and yeah. I think Dollhouse is, um, I think, maybe the most problematic. I haven't seen Dollhouse. Dollhouse is pretty neat. I, of the Whedon shows I'm familiar with, I like Dollhouse the least. I actually um, really didn't like um, Dr. Horrible's sing-along vlog. Um, never saw it. Which is, a, it's, was a pretty popular, like, fan cult film. Um, yeah, but it, that's true. Yeah. And it, it's because of, like... Well, it's, it's a little complicated to go into now, but it, there's some toxic masculinity elements, let's say, that I, uh, that pinged me, I think, but that wouldn't have pinged, um, other parts of the fandom, if that makes sense. Yeah. Dollhouse was, um, if I remember correctly, because it's been a, a while since I've seen it, is... Uh, basically an, an AI that gets downloaded into a re-downloaded into a body. 
Yeah, I think I think that was the idea. I it just didn't sit. It just didn't hit me right. It and didn't. I I don't think and I meant uh I think we're talking about Dr. Harble. Um You are, yeah. Yeah, I think the unique thing about it was the uh flip to the villain perspective. Um Yeah. And the fact that Neil Patrick Harris is in it and I mean he's great in everything. <laughs> And then uh, I believe Nathan Fillion's also in it. And Nathan's in it. Yep. Is that Felicia Day? Yes, it is Felicia Day. Yeah, but I just uh... yeah, I didn't. I I also didn't see the whole thing, so it could be that later on, the um, the tongue in cheek part of it, or the make commentary on it, was more explicit. But I got, I was actually getting annoyed at um, what's his face. Dr. Horrible? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got a little annoyed at Dr. Horrible. <laughs> Which I don't think I was uh, supposed to do. And I was like, well, maybe it's just not for me. Um, so Dollhouse uh, was a show that revolved around a corporation that ran numerous underground establishments, known as Dollhouses, around the globe that programmed individuals referred to as actives, or dolls, with temporary personalities and skills. Wealthy clients hire dolls from the dollhouse at great expense for various purposes, including heists, sexual encounters, assassinations, expert counsel, and all manner of unique experiences. Which, right there, basically women as puppets. That's basically reprogrammable, erasable puppets. Um... This this show never sat well with me. I didn't. I never watched it. Uh, we had a friend who was super into it. I could never. I don't know why this got more seasons than Firefly, but whatever. Um. I assume kidding. at some point there was just a well, we'll regret canceling it kind of yeah. sentiment. Yeah. I really liked it, but yeah, I recognize the problematic elements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, it's... Yeah, and so I, it, I'm not trying to say thing bad. I just... I'm yeah, just it, it, it didn't just, work for it didn't me. land for me. Yeah, exactly. Again, um, I think I, this is Dr. Horrible. Just, I'm, I don't same, think, Dr. Horrible, same. I don't think is on the same level as, as Dollhouse. Is why I keep making the distinction. <laughs> so, I, I want to say, I don't ever want, so if, if I'm going to give you, like, an opinion on something, I'm... I'm trying to say it didn't work for me. Yeah. In in the recognition that not not every piece of media is nobody died and made me in charge of telling people what the, right. deciding exactly. what art is good. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so the example I used recently was Ready Player One, which I hate. Hate that book so much. Um I am not the intended audience of that book. Apparently, I'm not alone. There are a large amount of women on Twitter uh, who also hate it. Um, but everyone else that I know that has read that book, I think except for Mark, has really enjoyed it. I don't remember if Mark read it. He, um, yeah, Mark, I don't know if Mark finished it, but he read some I of don't, it. I don't, I believe he, he didn't like what he read, and that's why he didn't, he didn't, uh... Michelle Trachtenberg, that's the other one who came out. And Amber Benson, mm. also. Um, who uh, accused Whedon of things. Yeah, it's, it's um, good to name the women. Yeah. Uh, Ray Fisher, Charisma Carpenter, Michelle Trachtenberg, and Amber Benson are the, the four who have come out and complained publicly about his behavior on set. Yeah, and I should mention that... Um... Galica Doe didn't complain publicly. She had a statement released that said that basically she had issues, but they were like resolved. I think she might have gone above his head to the studio or something. Yeah. And it's unclear what, if anything, happened, but just that there was a thing. Yeah. It happened and it's resolved now. Yeah. But it, um, the, I mean, the original Snyder Cut apparently was five hours long, and it sounds like everyone's stories got cut down, and they might have gotten cut down in ways that um, aren't sensitive to some concerns. But he, but in cutting them down, he changed who the characters were, which I think was a really unpleasant experience for the actors, particularly because he wasn't really looking for any feedback from them on what the new characters would be even though they had shot an entire movie as these characters already. So, 
and he based on the statements that i i read about what went down he was a big jerk about it yeah so um i and she she didn't say anything overt or public about it either um by kind of just before all this started to uh unravel uh scarlett johansson did have uh, issues with the way that Black Widow was treated in Age of Ultron. Um, and she said things like, you know, completely changed her role in the film and uh, upended the narrative. And I, I know a lot of people whose probably least favorite part about that film is what happened with Widow and Hulk. I'm still uh, mad. I'm so I'm mad. S- Listen, so am I. So am I. And apparently uh, Scarlett Johansson, Jeremy Renner, and Mark Ruffalo are all in the same boat as us. Um, so this this isn't explicitly a DC thing. There's there's a whole section on his uh, Wikipedia page if anyone is going to uh, is interested and wants to read more about it. I'm sure there's even more. Um, but there's there's a whole bunch in there. Um, that's just yeah it's a we lot can, we can that's that can be an off stream uh, yeah that's that's a that's research off stream research moment uh, for anyone who's interested some in finding out good about that. things that came out of uh whedon's tenure is we did get a lot of really wonderful shows with some great characters that paved the way for other creators to take um, a chance on to take a chance shows, yeah i think uh yeah. people like jane espenson Right, she did some of her first work with Whedon. Not her first work, but some of it. Um, and uh, she got a lot of her big breaks with him, and she's worked with him a lot, which is funny considering the very strange uh, ideals, I guess. Um, so she had she had worked on a couple of things before that, but it looks like her first big writing room breakout was on Buffy. Uh, so she'd written before that for Dinosaurs, and she wrote an episode for Star Trek Deep Space Nine, um, but really broke through. And since then, here we've just listed all of these these shows that we love that she's written for, um, and all these episodes that, that we love, or that I love, at least. A couple that you love. There's been a couple of your favorites in here. Yeah. Um, you know, and really, really notable episodes, and you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes bad things and bad people can open the, the door in ways we don't understand. And we can move along to happier things now. Hmm. Let's go back to gushing about the Nevers. Or talk about Wonder Woman. I'm not really picky. Ooh, are we using the fancy lights? Yeah. Trying to find lights that have the right vibe. The right vibe? Yeah. And then I wanted this to be like a real Marvel experience in here. So okay, I'm, okay. I have some like spa tile, but I think we can do better. I'm just I like to... that for now as the placeholder. Like I think that's a really good Yeah. So Actually, you're all for more Nevers gushing? Yeah. Alright. I can't wait to read your recaps. Actually. I'm also I'm trying really hard not to read while we're on stream so like <laughs> I can just like keep keep focus. Um but yeah, I'm I'm excited. There are so many elements of it that I'm so excited for. Because I feel like one of the things that we don't... All of the... Let me... No, Amalia and Malady definitely have a yin and yang Absolutely. thing going. Absolutely. They're in definitely intentional foils. And I think that it's, it's more that... It's a yin, it's a yin yang and Venn diagram, where Amalia's kind of overlapping between Malady and Pedant. Is what I think that we're doing, and I think we're even going to see her kind of foiled right up against. Um, I can't decide if they're going to foil uh, Amalia or Pedant with Lavinia Bidlow. I can't tell yet. Uh, because we just we just got a nice Lavinia reveal, and we're just starting to see kind of what game she's playing. But I think that we're going to see a couple of sets of yin yangs and a couple of sets of foils, and I think that we're going to see Malady and Lavinia 
kind of uh, foiled opposite each other, and then we're gonna have one with Melody and True, and we're gonna see um, Amalia's relationship with Melody and her relationship with Penance kind of um, flip flopping against each other. And I'm very excited for it. It's so I'm I'm so excited. Um, and I don't know where Mary Brighton fits in in the grand scheme of things either. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, so what I was going to say before I got distracted by that question, <laughs> uh, I think the reason I'm so excited about this is we tend to think of superpowers as being such a modern genre, right? Uh, you know, we, we think of the first science fiction book is often regarded as Frankenstein, which came out in 1813 and was republished in 1833. And then there was no more hard sci-fi as we think of sci-fi until uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and then H.G. Wells' works in the 1890s. Um, so, and then so superheroes, specifically superheroes in comics, uh, come out in like the 1940s right so the night the flash came out in like i think 1940 or 1941 mm -hmm. and he the first because i want to say the first superhero was the phantom who debuted in 1936 so 19 if you think of hg's work which was the 1890s. Oh God, did I run over you? No, you're just screaming. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, that was a concern. Yeah. I had, like I felt something under my thing and I was like, oh God, did I run over the cat? <laughs> um, so there's 40 years between, um, you know, what we're seeing now in the Nevers and what we think of as the first published superheroes, right? And then the fantasy genre didn't really pick up i don't i want it until lord of the rings he did kind of yeah he did yeah. kind of make the epic so we, we have yeah okay epic fantasy is a good place because we have all these kind of like soft sci-fi or, or like sci fantasy things we have you know you have uh the vampire and dracula and uh uh, Erewhon and um, you know oh my god what's that bitch that I hate what's the uh, Gulliver's Travels oh. which is travel fiction but also has like some Jonathan fantastic Swift. oh god I hate Jonathan Swift too I, he, oh my god and the amazing life and time of uh captain singleton like there's like all these like things so we're seeing superheroes superheroes in quotations we're seeing super powered individuals or powered because i so far none of the powers that's a lie because there's bonfire annie mm -hmm. and it's i think me, that bitch <laughs> hey amanda <laughs> um, hey amanda we have, a, we have a couple of like big powers right we have um uh, Mrs. Best has her shatter power. We're we talking about the Nevers and other things. Yes, and Dinah is screaming into mm -hmm. what? What do you want, Kat? Um, so we're seeing these powered individuals in a time where science fiction is barely a genre. And that is like that is so exciting because now we get to take all of those early moments. There's so much H.G. Wells in Pettence's story. I'm sorry, I'm gonna geek out about this for a really long time, you guys, because it is so exciting. Um, like, there's just, there's so much. Another, does Desiree actually not remember when, when people say when they're affected by her turn or is she bullshitting? Oh, thank you, Amanda. This is our Wonder Woman logo build. And because Wonder Woman is an antiquities researcher, I am building it as a um, as a museum. Just like a straight up art museum. So there's gonna be sculptures, there's gonna be stuff on the walls. And then in the back here, I have an archeology span table and some science equipment that I expect would be used for carbon dating. Yeah. Um. And the, the outside, the outside is Wonder Woman logo, 
but inside instead of doing a color challenge i'm doing it like a the style i'm going for is greek nouveau <laughs> so it's got these like uh nouveau kind of or it's not nouveau it's the other one, Deco? Is it Art Deco or Art Nouveau? Deco. Oh, crap. Deco. I mix those up all the time. I'm so sorry. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, yeah, so it's maybe maybe it's like a Greek Deco or yeah. I, I, I basically I have these like old school looking Greek elements, and then I'm I'm mixing this more modern but still kind of retro style with it, and it's all white and gold and stuff. Yay! <laughs> Deco. Okay. I, I genuinely mixed up Art Deco and Art Nouveau for like five years. <laughs> that's, you know, I think it that was that's a fair. problem. <sighs> um, yeah, and I recently learned that they were different, and I'm, I'm so sorry because I know you majored in architecture. <laughs> <laughs> but in my defense, they both start with art. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> CCU the worst. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Anyway, I apologize. <laughs> um, you were saying something about oh, uh, um, superpowers Re of the Victorian era and H.G. Wells. You're geeking out about H.G. Wells. <laughs> I'm always geeking out about H.G. Wells. This is true. I that like there are like three things I will constantly geek out about, and uh, two of them are are. Uh, 1800 science fiction literature. They both ended um, in O. <laughs> yeah. Yes, these things are very important. Um, but to Ash's question, does uh, Desiree no, actually not remember? I. It's too soon for me to tell. Uh, uh, the implication I got was she was uh, deliberately forgetting. But there were like some there... moments where I thought she might actually be forgetting. Yeah, too. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, there were um, definitely times when she implied that she would deliberately forget. But I don't know. If but other times, yeah, yeah, she she definitely was just BSing. yo. I think I said this last time, but I'm gonna say it again. Oh shit, she's in Once Upon a Time. Good to know. Uh, the woman who's playing Malady mm -hmm. looks like Sarah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, she doesn't really remember. How does she know? So it's possible that she knows she has the effect. Um, but doesn't remember the effects of the effect. Well, she she remembers the there was one in particular that we know she remembers, right? Because that's why she's there. Right. right. Because she yeah. relates it to Amalia. So I, I I do I do feel like it is a either she doesn't understand what's happening in certain situations or she is purposely forgetting is what I've where I've landed. I think it might even be a little of column A and a little of column B. Yeah, I don't know if it's explicitly um... I think there are some things that she remembers. I don't think it's a magical forgetting because otherwise she wouldn't know about, she wouldn't know that she was in danger. But yeah. uh, I think there's, to some degree, she even maybe doesn't care about some of the stuff that she's hearing necessarily. She, she doesn't strike me as the type of character who's saving it all in a ledger to use as leverage to like enhance her political yeah, situation and blackmail people necessarily. She didn't ask for this. This is just what she does. This is just kind mm -hmm. of the um, the tools of the trade, as it were. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. It's a terrible fucking name. I'm never gonna. By the way. I have not told you recently. Malady played Merida. Oh. Malady played Merida. Wow, yeah. that's a yeah. shift. <laughs> right? Yeah. The hair, though. I was looking at her hair. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Mm. Um, I was watching uh, our friend. Yeah, e, I figured in once. Going to love mm -hmm. this. Uh, has started the 100 baby challenge. And oh. My goodness. I have not thanked you recently enough for the care and dedication within which that you prepare names. <laughs> Uh, oh boy, that's a, a thing. And, and then now looking at Augie's name is just like, oh god. Like, what the fuck? Um, I'm so excited. I, w I really want to see more of Horatio. Which one is Horatio? 
the the good doctor, the doctor that we like. Okay. Yes. Yeah, he was great. I imagine we'll be seeing a lot of him. I hope so. Because he's gonna come in handy. <laughs> because somebody keeps getting into fights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> His sass level is off the charts. Oh like, yeah, I I appreciated at the end where she tried, Amani tried to run some some BS on them, and they were like, no. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. I his his sass is just there is nothing I love more than a sassy character especially like a deadpan sassy character like who's clearly put upon like <laughs> Falcon um that was a yeah yeah Falcon <laughs> is a deadpan snarker and he's very put on uh, yeah, that that was a pretty funny turn too. No, you didn't, because I feel like that that was a very, that's a very Sherlock Holmes thing to do. Like, well, Watson, you idiot, you see what happened was it only appeared that I was particularly if you've watched Sherlock, the show. Yeah. Uh, you see, I missed all of my vital organs, and then I tumbled myself off the building into a cart where I was replaced by a false cadaver, and then you know that she <laughs> she tries to pull those up, and they're like, no, no, you weren't, you were not, on, not your skills that. were not on the level. And then she tries to blame the guy. I think there should be an abundance just... of sapphic art in this museum, please. I will do my best. I love I don't the know... print. I love oh. the sword painting. Just How about the all these women? Is this good, Amanda? Yes. Are those from from Glamour Life? Yeah, they are. Yes, use the Rika portrait. I actually compared Monday to Trailer Park Sherlock Holmes. Huh? No, that is a pretty accurate. Yes, that, um, is, that is a pretty accurate. So that's actually an interesting comparison of um, Sherlock Holmes and Watson in the um, the Irregulars versus Frank Mundy in the Nevers. Um, Sherlock Holmes and Watson in uh, the Irregulars and in Enola Holmes are, and it, I mean in general, are portrayed as yeah, more women equals good. I will do my best. Uh, are, are portrayed as. Victorian gentlemen, uh, because they were, um, and then in Except one of them was an avid opiate addict and a problem. Yes, but he's still he was still in society. Listen, Hugo is running a, a sex club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, um, but they they are generally part of the privileged class and. Enola Holmes and the Irregulars both address that about them explicitly. Um, whereas yes. Frank Mundy is definitely working class. More women. I will do my best. I believe I have some statues of women. This is a woman. Hi, Mark. I have stopped myself from posting tentacles after that statement. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you for restraining the tentacles. <laughs> Your desire has been noted. Uh, you were saying about Sherlock? Yes. I, I will say the so, one yeah, Frank bit Bundy of Watson... is clearly working class. Yeah. Um, what I've seen of... Because I've only seen the first episode of The Irregulars... Um, Watson is very posh. Yeah. The, the, so what they do with Watson in the Irregulars is very interesting for that character. Since Watson is... Usually the role of Watson is to humanize Sherlock Holmes. But in the Irregulars, it's actually the opposite. Uh, Sherlock Holmes is there actually to humanize Watson. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so they, they flip that. leave any room for art in this gallery did you leave any room for art in this gallery no you put fucking columns every goddamn place <laughs> i'm not sorry you're gonna be though there aren't that, that many pictures that's fair you got a lot of statues somewhere 
Also, Malady's turn, yo. Her turn. Oh, yeah. Oof. Yo. That, uh... That's fucked up. Sounds like a regular art museum, architectural masturbation, most of them. Wow. <laughs> You're not wrong, though. You're not wrong, though. How else will you know that the art is fine if it's not surrounded by a bunch of useless columns? The columns are there to tell you that the art is, is good. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> Why is this in wall sculptures and not in photos? That, that seems like a... The sorting on this... I would finish builds in, in like, two-thirds of the time if the sorting on this game was right. That's fair. The taller the columns, the better the art. Exactly. I feel like... Like that's a thing. <laughs> that's a thing for something else. But I'm just gonna sit over here... And not. I, I know what you're thinking. And you're probably right. Yep, yep, yep. Is there a fire extinguisher in here? I think that's prudent. One fire extinguisher for the whole museum. <laughs> Yeah, it was a phallic joke, yeah. <laughs> I was right. Amanda's not, gonna, I... <laughs> Amanda's not gonna let you get away with that implication. <laughs> nope. Nope. I'm over here, like, trying to be good, and, and nope. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> you, chat, you are incorrigible. Yep. yep. You will not be corriged. Run out of space in this build. I can see it. I can see it. Zina, nobody cares. <laughs> Alec, you made Mark take the tentacles out. <sighs> Never a thing. <laughs> what are you eating? What are you trying to eat? Stop it. Stop it. Hi. Hello. Hello, cat. Oh, I have to, you know, there are actual requirements for a museum. I should probably, like, <laughs> you should probably pay find out what they are. What those are. Oh, an art center. That's cool. That's like a museum, but like a little more hands on. But we're doing an, a, a museum museum. I did not put a bathroom in this build. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> I didn't put a bathroom in the build, you guys. Are you serious? There is no bathroom in the build. <laughs> oh my goodness. I didn't put a bathroom in the build. <laughs> oh. You see, this is why requirements are important. I did not put a bathroom in the build. <laughs> there was no bathroom. Yeah, I play that. I play a lot of squash line. Seemed like it was supposed to be more important than it was, and I just didn't understand the context. I mean, it's athletic. It's physical. Like I, how? But <laughs> okay, so I could put it over here and give it a triple window. Is that what you require? Okay, this is basically racket. 
Okay, no. Squash is racquetball. It's like he's playing rugby. Well, maybe it's supposed to be contrasted uh, against... Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, all just, right. I'll put it with it, a window. It just means that Hugo spends a lot of time smacking balls around. I... Hmm, that's... Hmm. I mean, <laughs> that's true. But I believe that maybe... Uh, and maybe they did it, but maybe they're trying to contrast this with uh, Madison's military service. Madison's in shape because he has an incredible war record, and this guy is a oh, dandy, yeah. and he plays a ridiculous uh, that, sport game. That 100% is what they're trying to do, but that's not what's happened. Uh, I was actually thinking of just removing this wall and then maybe just like putting more art here, seeing as this is in fact a museum. Did you want, do you, you can have one window to the other room and what's it? No, we are not putting a window in the bathroom to the research room. The researchers the, have other things to look at. Let the researchers research and poop, peace. They don't need to watch you poop. Research and pee, what? <laughs> peace. Let them. <laughs> CC, what the shit, man? <laughs> the chat is this way because I am this way. <laughs> or are you this way because the chat is this way? Why not both? Chicken and egg, question mark? Actually, this is kind of uh, just like a weird space. So I could make it a storage room where we put the secret artifacts. The Tesseract? Wait, that's the wrong. That's no, the wrong probably property. just, you know, the, the magical Amazon artifacts. That's fair. That's fair. I like this actually. That's the research. What did I? What? Wait. What did I do? Wait. What did I do? Why are you what the shit? What? Why are you what the shit? Oh, you? is the wait? Is the shit the research? Oh, yes. Right. Oh no! No, this is not. No, this is. This is a museum. It's not a lab. Actually, sometimes they do research um, <coughs> fecal leavings and bathroom stuff because some of that, sometimes that's the most well-preserved. Yeah, but not in a modern bathroom. I agree. I agree. I just, I'm just saying sometimes archaeologists do that. Sometimes archaeologists are gross. Not often, but sometimes. What happened to the light? get deleted? Must have got deleted. Okay. Okay. I guess we should make this look like an actual bathroom door so it's not con people don't go into the research area trying to pee. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. What are you doing in chat? <laughs> I did this. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is my fault. I'm sorry. There we go. I thought we had a unisex door. With the Duchamp in the picture, the bathroom could absolutely be an art installation. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, I'm gonna put very experimental toilets and stuff in here. So you're gonna put experimental toilet stuff in there? Yeah. Some toilets are like, you know, weird. Because they're, they're like designed. They're not just, you know, a regular porcelain bowl, but you know, you'll see. I see I've disturbed you. <laughs> I can tell by your silence. I'm just... I periodically question all my life choices, and sometimes it has stuff to do with you, and sometimes it does not. Right now, it does. I'm also trying to figure out if my animals are eating each other. The staple. <laughs> Toilet sink window fuck wash. 
Princess, oh, see Jesus. you in toilet. Toilet sink window fuck brush. <laughs> Listen, last time we built. What did we build? What did I say that we built? We clipped it. Oh, Christ. Give me a second. Uh, da -da 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 -da. This is my job as the person who is not driving. This is my job. <laughs> this is my job. Chop, 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 chop. I believe last time we built a fuck palace. Fuck palace. That's what it was. Yeah. Sorry. Most of our clips are one of us freaking out over destroying something. <laughs> yep. Fuck palace. And by most of our... So actually, our clips are all funny because half of them are you doing ridiculous things and the other ones are me giggling maniacally at destroying things. You do love and a good explosion. I really do love a good explosion. I, I truly do. And also being scared out of my goddamn mind. Okay. I have two ways I can go with this. One is the, like... Super future toilet? Uber modern toilet with like there's no stop it walls stop it walls okay it's you know it's modern it's like aesthetic it's removed all the unnecessary parts of the toilet it is just a bowl alone the other option is this like what is it called it's a talking toilet so the yeah, art it would be an in interactive art piece where it's like your interaction with the toilet is the art so it, it talks to you but it's not like the toilet experience you would expect so either either toilet redesigned and the art is the design of the toilet or uh interactive art piece toilet i'm gonna go with interactive toilet. a bowl alone <laughs> I suppose there's this one that's covered in paint, but I don't feel like it's the vibe. Oh, wow. This is... Hmm. Ever feel like you're being watched on the john? It's because there's a giant eye on the toilet seat. <laughs> I did not know that this had all of these other swatches yep. here. Yep. Because yep. I have never had the desire to use the paint drippy toilet in any of my builds. Yeah. Oh, I just found the one where you're wiggling the mini horse. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty excited about that mini horse. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna do a bowl alone. And we're gonna put it all the way down at the end. And then we'll put the sink over here. So the bowl is in fact alone. And I'm gonna put a plaque over the toilet. Just because, oh, because it's, it's art. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put a plaque under all the pictures, but I'm gonna put the plaque all at once. Oh. You finding the copy borrows was also pure delight. I clipped that a couple of times. <laughs> the physics engine in Cat Cafe was just something truly delightful and also terrifying. Eco Life has a matching sink. It does. We'll put a mirror. Sorry, I found all your um, your uh, your 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 calico uh, clips. There which are, are many. Always a, there are many, and they are a delight. Honestly, honestly. Okay. I have this giant mirror across from the toilet. This should reflect the toilet out of the windows, but it also lets you like see the toilet from an observational angle. So like you could see 
you know. This you could look so at weird. the toilet directly, or you could look at the, the toilet indirectly through the mirror. we do for chat <laughs> is just... I, I feel like people must download my builds off the gallery and be like, and be what, like the what is happening? There's no, there's no real way to... <laughs> Did you make that, oh, Mark? Good. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Mark, that doesn't belong in here. That belongs, that beautiful work of art belongs in the Discord. It belongs in a museum. <laughs> this is amazing. Thank you for making this. <laughs> yes, it belongs in a museum. Uh, we're gonna need a plant in here. <laughs> <laughs> because after all this, she's still gonna have to landscape. <laughs> It is like your Easter egg. That's true. <laughs> like your signature. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's a secret message. If you've been in chat, then you're in the know. Then you're in the know. That's the only way you'll ever and, understand this build. <laughs> and everyone else is just deeply confused. <laughs> I think we have enough room in this bathroom for a big plant. I think we have enough room for a big plant. Yeah. Or a statue. I have missed true art. Fucking amazing art. Yes. I agree. <laughs> One thing I don't understand about some of the Sims plants is like why they sit so far forward. Like, it's like they purposefully make it hard for you to put them in corners. Yeah, I, you know, they probably just don't understand what I do with the plants. They don't have the innate plant understanding like I do. Ben, are you whining at Dinah? Because it sounds like you're whining at Dinah. That looks very outside. I, there's a small grass thing. Not this small grass thing, but maybe. Well, okay. That blocks the toilet, which we can't do. There is another small or grass thing. Mm-hmm. Just, I swear I spent oh, hello. most of my builds searching for items. Doggo? He has been a very good bean. Well, yeah. I have been uh, building and streaming the last couple of days. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Why do you think he's hunting Dinah? <gasps> <laughs> so I might, I might retract that that statement in a few minutes. <laughs> But he's been very good with Winnie, actually. He is very obsessed with Winnie. Yeah. Yes, that is his kitten. I didn't adopt a kitten for me, I just adopted it for the dog. <laughs> it's Finn's kitten. It is Finn's kitten. He cries for her. Oh. And when she gets released from her pen, he uh, she, uh, she like runs over to him. It is honestly, truly like one of the cutest things, except that he's literally like 16 times her size. Because uh, she's, like, a pound? <laughs> Alethea, in regards to your question, I was pretty surprised, actually. But only because I feel like we just have, hadn't seen very much of her at all, so... I feel like there was something else going on there. I felt like that was something that I was, like, missing. Yeah, I could not tell if she was a, a gun for hire or if that was like a relationship of some kind. Like I was very Yeah, he uh he was not surprised by that. Uh I was I was half surprised by it. I thought it was going to be uh somebody else. But it was one of those things that once the reveal happened, I was like, "Oh. Okay." Yes, you missed a 
we have we've been having a, a lot of discussion about the never so smart. many discussions so if you have anything you want to mention or ask about or add this is the place or gush about or gush about i mm, never mind Oh, this is a was... circle rug, isn't it? <coughs> uh oh, oh that makes sense. And then it's like this. I'm mostly not watching the next episode because I because he likes you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's very nice of you. Yeah. I wasn't that surprised by what Annie did. You kind of see it coming, she just stands there. Doing frack all while true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. She doesn't. She was not a super uh, invested character. Yeah, they make it clear she's not there for the cause. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm wondering why she is there. If that's the case. Okay, we are good now. It was mad because we were on a diagonal. Of course it was mad because we were on a diagonal. Why aren't you doing something? Your friend is getting a world star level beatdown. That makes sense. Yeah, I guess I had assumed... Oh, near the end of episode one. Yeah. Oh, that's much better. And it's easier. <laughs> You like it in gold? Words fall down so easy. Hmm. Good money the gold and white is softer than the white and black. It is. I think I like the white and black. I do like the black. It gives it a little bit of punch. Yeah. I do think that uh, that Annie's on other people's payroll. Um, mm. I do I do agree with that. I think that uh, Annie's playing a slightly different game. Hi, buddy. Hello. Get a lot of use out of this rug. You get so much use out of that rug. It's yeah. a good rug. Are you whining because Dinah's being a brat? Okay, I guess just fuck off then. Okay, let's attempt some sculptures. We're gonna start with the sculptures of the women. We all know what belongs in a Wonder Woman museum. Those are tidy. Oh, oh, wow. It's tiny now. Oh, shit. Getting edgy in here. Oh, those were part of the, um, the Hispanic heritage. Yeah, this uh, is update. clearly some kind of de dead yeah. item. Yeah. Oh, do you just want to stand here and get butt scritches? This dog is so spoiled. See, it, why is this in sculptures and not in clutter? Is is that Jack Skellington? Is that Jack Skellington? No, no, it's not Jack Skellington. It's some kind of I don't know what this is. Okay. Porta Pal. What the fuck? I think it's supposed to be a Funko Pop. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Oof! Hi, Finn! <laughs> Hi, BB. Hello. Hello, fat boy. Hi, Bubba. He's sleepy and wants to crawl in my lap, but uh, he doesn't fit here in this chair. Aww. Hi. Hello. And you're trying- I know you're trying to watch the stream, buddy, I know. Hi, Yesterday, Finn. he was- he was watching 
uh, the stream a little bit. He gets very upset now if uh, he's not allowed to sit and cuddle. Because, you know, he's a spoiled little brat. Yeah, Funko Pop. What did I say? It's Funko Pop. Hi. Hello. There. Oh, I like the little fairy statue. Yeah. Gonna go with anything as anything as feminine as we can find. And then put a bunch of weapons on the wall? Yeah! We should have swords! I think we have a few. Oh yeah, you gotta do- you definitely gotta put in some of the vases. Yeah, this seems like the kind of, you know, some kind of Greek urn or something. Yeah. Oh! Ooh, and some of the stuff from Island Living might be cool too. Like those, uh, the wave vases or whatever. And they have a couple of wooden sculptures. They're a little bit more- they're not quite as, uh... Well, they're not Greco-Roman inspired, but they do look cool. What is the description of this? Replica Ithorian Gravestone. Oh, Ithorian with an I? Yes. I love how the Twitter icon for the nervous hashtag is the umbrella shrouded by the light for Mary's song. Aww. That's cute. I don't- well, I'm just I can't gonna... tell if this is supposed to be a feminine um, image, so... <laughs> it's, uh, you know, the Ithorians don't, um, display gender well. I mean, yeah. they, they do, but they, they, they all kind of look the same. Oh, yeah, the umbrellas are really cool. Are they umbrellas? Are, I thought they might be parasols, but I don't really care because they, they're a, a multi-tool. <laughs> they're amazing. Apparently, I'm not the only person who thinks that, um, Amalia reminds them of, uh, Kristen Ritter. Of Jessica Jones. Okay. Which I'm not mad about, because I'm not wrong. Actually, actually, no. I need to get off Twitter until I've seen this episode. Yes. Do. Uh, I was like, I'll just go follow the Nevers. Nope, 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 nope. I'll just, I'll just stay the fuck off Twitter. Danger. Danger. Much, much danger. As it is, I've, I've managed to avoid, um, I, I think the big captain and winter soldier uh, spoilers. I've decided that this is Yannick art, Amanda. <laughs> and I apologize for the way that I am. I wonder if they have... Ooh. Oh no, these are large. Can we put these here? We might do this. We might do this. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, we're gonna have some real honest to goodness Greek ruins. I am upset. The HBO shop does not have any Nev Nevers merch in, in their stuff. I am sad. It's clearly some kind of magic artifact. Oh, that's cool. They have a throw pillow for, uh... I'm gonna put her here. There 
there we go. Does it have to be outside if it's got flowers in it? Is that how that works? Do we do flowers inside? good yellow swatch for this or a good red swatch maybe we'll put oh, this one out back it does it does have an official companion podcast by the way oh yeah i also forgot to mention elizabetta's story broke my freaking heart elizabetta was the the italian girl oh yeah oh that's yeah. right yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very much. Very much. Yeah. Broke my heart. I thought they did a good job of making that compelling in the short yeah. amount of time that they had. Yeah. Cordelia Royal Bust. Do it in gold. Yeah, that looks nice. Who's this? I think. This oh, that's that's the Jedi Lord Keeper. I think we can put this inside. We just have to make it smaller. Even too ridiculous either. That's good. That size is down well. I, I'm glad it does because that does not always happen. Yeah, that is true. It does not always happen. going to uh I'm gonna have a lot to look forward to with episode three. Do it work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I could take the picture off of this wall and then that can just be like a statue gallery thing. I'll put the picture here. I should either pause it or turn off the stream. Yeah I think the likelihood that you uh spoiler us is Fairly high. Oh, I like this right in front of the window. I think that looks good there. Okay. Some lovely ladies back here. I don't want to do it either, but promise I won't spoil. Okay. Then why are you sad, buddy? Did you accidentally... I have a feeling that he accidentally left a bunch of his toys in my room again. Oh. Buddy. Not that he doesn't have enough toys, mind you. But not the ones that he wants. You don't know this. She loves to. Yeah, the the cold opens on this show are really good. I think it's actually that he's just sleepy and wants to cuddle, but um, well, he does not fit in my lap. And I don't have an ottoman yet like you do for the doggos. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, good. This is good because I don't have to mess around with platforms. Yeah. Does it does it actually hold things? Yeah, it's a shelf. 
Oh, shit! Apparently it doesn't want to put this on the shelf, but it will fit. Just won't. I don't think this is designed to go on tables is why it's not working. Yeah, no, it is not. Yeah. That's fine. We can make it fit. I knew that. <laughs> I mean, I didn't until about an hour ago, but I did know when she started screaming. Yeah, well, that would do it. That would do it. Oh, uh, today Winnie was able to crawl and get on top of the cat tree. Why did it suddenly decide to hate me after it worked before? You oh. played this game, like you, you know the answer to that I don't question. Know why I'm asking? <laughs> Holy shit, Dinah. She surprised you again? Yeah. I heard a bunch of shuffling, and then I just saw two eyes peering at me from on top of my monitor. Your cat is terrifying. What are you doing, you psycho animal? Stop it! Why? Why is she like this? Oh, did you see my shiny dice, by the way? post a picture of I, them I sent somewhere? them to you. I sent them to you. Uh, then I think I did. Okay. Those are, uh, Cassiopeia and Bellatrix. Nice. By, uh, uh, a Dispel Dice, I think it is? I think so. I think that's who it was. Yeah, they have, like, foil flakes in them. Ooh. They are very sharp. Sharp, like, I don't know if I can play with these because I will stab myself. <laughs> Sharp, like, uh, piercing the hull of a battle cruiser. Fire yes. Nation battle cruiser. Sharp? Yes. Fire Nation battle cruiser piercing Sharp. Like, no lie. If, if I stepped on this D4, I would probably need, I would need stitches. And I may have. It's I a might, caltrop. Like, yeah, no, these like I could. Yeah, these are like these these even by like D four standards. Like this is a lot. Um, I don't, which is weird. I don't normally like uh, hard edge dice or sharp edge dice. Um, because I do feel like I would accidentally stab myself with it. Easels are actually kind of expensive in this game. Easels are kind of expensive in this game. Is this an easel? <laughs> Rug Ross's happy little easel. Happy little easel. Oh, that's sweet. It's the cheapest easel in the game, but it's it has to be unlocked. Or do I still have... Is it that I still have... I still have a colored filter on, that's why. Okay. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. It does. I don't think this works. It's just too, like, kind of modern and weird. Let's go back to our easel. We'll do two.
Yeah. Yeah, he just wanted to let me know that Dinah was in here. <laughs> He's helpful. He is helpful. A little useless, but helpful. Necessary, but cool. I made my own sculpture. Haha. -ha. Hey, Rad, welcome back. Hey, Rad. Hello and welcome. Our art museum's coming along. forgot an entire bathroom. We almost forgot an entire bathroom. You only need five sculptures to be considered a museum? Uh, and ten wall decor things. Jesus Christ. Well, you know, it doesn't have to be yeah, that that's big. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Fifteen pieces and, of art. Know, Maxis does have like thing like rules on their thing where they're only allowed to have like an X amount of like items on their lots, including like windows, doors, and things. Yeah. That's why sometimes their builds look so uh like they do. Open. Yeah. Hi, buddy. What is wrong? What is wrong, my dear? I get a surprising amount of use out of the Batu trash cans. You know what? They're good trash cans. They come I don't in know colors. Let's... You know, the House of Mouse knows what they're doing, okay? <laughs> they're not like, they don't look offensive. They're very generic looking. They go with a lot of different uh, styles. They come in a lot of colors. Are you licking the wall? Stop it. What are you doing? My dog is losing his mind. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mystery doing flavor. Dog stuff. So I far, the do... mystery flavor is nothing. No that... flavor? Is it just or sugar? Just like, is yeah. What? How does one have Twizzlers that taste like nothing? How could a Twizzler taste like nothing? I mean, do Twizzlers really have? Flavors? They taste like red. I guess. Or they taste like licorice. Uh. So I'm pretty sure we have like a certificate thing that looks like a plaque. Here in the wall sculptures. Just gotta find it. Normal Twizzlers are strawberry. There's a mild flavor to it, but it smells strongly like grape. Weird. Weird. So it smells like grape, but it tastes like nothing. That's weird. It 
smells like grape juice. That is a weird, weird phenomenon. That That is incredibly strange. It's not bad, just bland. Hmm. Okay. It's an insufficiently flavored Twizzler. That's weird. I can't imagine that a plaque like this would be an expensive item. Do you have your filters oh, on? here we go. But yeah, this will work. A Paramount plaque. You hit all the lot requirements, so that's good. Lot requirements! Woo! the rainbow twizzlers with all the flavors oh. that sounds interesting and concerning like is one of those flavors licorice it's one of those flavors orange i feel like orange and licorice don't go together or do you like peel them like do you like do you like like a like string cheese oh i have peeled wait no i don't you don't peel regular twizzlers but there are other peelable Twizzlers. I mean, you you could in theory be a, like, you could. There are some Twizzlers that are designed to peel, and then there are some Twizzlers that, like, it's all one mass and it just has ridges. I was once gifted uh, an orange and cream filled pack of Twizzlers. Interesting. It was weird. Because the cream, like, didn't linger, so then it was just, like, a burst of cream and then just orange. Mm. Oh, okay. It is a pack of Twizzlers that is rainbow. Not each Twizzler is all of the flavors. That That's makes for the best. way more sense. Yeah. That makes... Where did you find the barbarian swords? They're, uh, from... They movie props? Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I got there. Here too. I believe we did say that we would put weapons in here. We did. We did. Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. Hi, Dinah. You know, if we ever run out of warheads, that might be an interesting um, go-to. Yeah. Yeah. Dinah, nobody cares. God. <laughs> yeah, we'll put this magic prop sword in here. I think this is supposed to be like a generic lightsaber, but I don't even care. I mean, it's definitely a lightsaber. Or a uh, He-Man's Master Sword. 
Yeah, it could be that too. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I can't... You're not... You're fat now. I can't pick you up with one hand. No. Oh. She has decided to just run away instead because I accidentally kicked her in the face. Oh. Oh, if she would, like, stay still, I could pick her up. Are you going to use that triple sword? Oh my god. Finn. Yep. I think I used all the swords available to us. There it is. Never mind. About to ask a question and then I saw it. Raspberry, grape, lemonade, orange, strawberry, and watermelon. Is grape the surprise oh. flavor? Or is there also surprise? Finn is very alarmed that Dinah is still in here, and he needs me to know that... Mother, no. there is an intruder. It's just the purple one. <laughs> oh. oh. Okay, buddy. Here. Okay. Hi. Hello. Boo Boo, you're a little too big for this. Oh, he's watching you, though. Not like a weirdo. Just, like, curiously. Yeah, you didn't used to be tall enough to get up here. doesn't have a gift shop. Wouldn't even know how to build that in The Sims. I wouldn't either. But it is uh, something that every museum has. Honestly, I love gift shops and museums. And zoos. Oh and yeah, gift shops and zoos are pretty good too. They really are. You, uh, are you aware of the the time or yeah you just trying to wrap up okay so um on this we still have to do the exterior landscaping mm -hmm. and the back research room yes but oh wait as soon as I put a light in the bathroom we'll be done with the main part of the interior uh, which is pretty good timing I think because it's about time to wrap up And you can join us again tomorrow mm -hmm. when we do our watch party for episode six of Invincible. I think, right? That, I ask you. No, uh, you're not. You're not on those. You don't know. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a mark question. The next uh, episode of Invincible. Uh, it might be episode. Five? No, it's episode six. I think it's episode so six. So you watched episode one. 
And then you I'm watched current. episodes two and three, and then four and five? I, I, th maybe we only watched four? That doesn't seem right. You, Some of these are labeled poorly. How many weeks did you do this? Three. Okay, so the first week you only watched one. And every time after that you watched two. We had, see the problem is we had a couple of, uh, of crashes and with the, the mislabel issues we've been having. Oh yeah. Uh, they're all mixed up together. Mm. We'll all go through it, I'll figure out, but we'll be watching, uh, Invincible tomorrow. And, it, and then yeah. Tuesday we'll be doing something. And then next Saturday, we're going to have a very special chat stream. Yeah, we're going to do just chatting for free comic book day. And we're going to talk about uh, what it's, how writing a comic book is different from writing prose. Um, and also, I think uh, we said something about like the effects of medium on story and how to utilize those and what we've run into or what we've seen or experienced. Um, and if you guys want some tips and tricks, we have those as well. And yeah. Have you gone this entire time without saving? Well, I saved right now, so... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's what's important. <laughs> oh, dear! Okay. Okay. Boy, that's terrifying. Um, so yes, we'll be back tomorrow to watch Invincible. Tuesday to do something. Probably Control, but we'll see. Um... My hands are still feeling like extra um, wonky, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then Saturday, and I believe the boys may or may not join us. Yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. But, but we, so might, we it, might get a rare there, appearance from the boys. We might get a rare appearance from the guys. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Sunday we'll be back here again and we'll finish off this build. Yes. So... Uh, have a great night and have a great week and until we see you again stay super have a good night guys stay super and stay safe <laughs> <laughs>